Hello! <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to High Rollers Dungeons & Dragons. We've restarted a few things. I'm really hoping that we don't have any more technical problems. Sam is doing his best to fix it, uh, and we think we might know fixes for the future. Welcome to the Dungeons & Dragons stream here on the Yorkscast yeah. Twitch. Uh, I'm your Dungeon Master Mark Sherlock Humes. Joining me this week, we'll do the whole thing as normal. We have Rhiannon and oh. Trot. There we go. I want to test that we can switch between cameras and it's not going to crash again. But Rhiannon and Trot, no Kim this week, she's not feeling well. On the other side, <laughs> we have Tom and we have Katie. I'm just They're here. here. Just power stance. Yeah. Done. We're on the level. <laughs> We're on the level. It looks okay. Katie's recovering, like, on the I'm, verge I mean, of ill. I'm getting ill. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just hit. And Kim is ill. But thank you for joining us. We're sorry about the technical problems. Uh, hopefully they'll be fixed. Um, and we'll try a few things. Uh, welcome. A couple of announcements to do before we start our game today. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to our sponsor, D&D Beyond. Woo! Are you all right there, Thomas? Yeah, yeah, I just noticed I was in the other camera. Carry on. Oh, okay, excellent. D&D uh, Beyond is the official Dungeons & Dragons uh, digital supplement. You can use it to manage your campaigns. It's got a compendium. It has all the rules, adventures, everything you can possibly need. It's an amazing tool. We all use it. Yeah. We just used it before the stream for me to sort out everybody's experience. Tom's my specific, Tom is the D&D Beyond Bo Golden Boy of the Week because he went in and added his own magic items. <laughs> I like how we both just showed <laughs> love D&D Beyond. <laughs> yeah, Katie's I, uh, actually doing it. I added my stuff uh, during yeah. the last stream. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Gold star. Um, really, really cool. If you're a DM and you're running campaigns, it is a genuinely super useful tool. <laughs> yeah. Also, if you're a DM and you own all the content, you can share that with players in your group. So not everybody needs to buy it. You can all chip in so the DM has the books yeah. and then you can share it all together. So and it's really cool. If you're on twitch.tv forward slash high rollers, you can see the extension as well to actually watch our stats in real time. Real time. Yeah. Um, a couple Watch of just die. not too much to go over this yeah. week. Uh, don't forget, if you've got Amazon Prime, you do get a free Twitch Prime sub, which yeah. you can use for the Yogscast uh, Twitch or the High Rollers DD Twitch if you want to get some High Rollers specific emotes. Um, also, don't forget to check out our podcast and YouTube channel where we upload all of our VODs. Yeah. Uh, it's really great. Podcast has been doing super well. Yeah, it's been doing really well. It's super been well. Great. Glad that yeah. people are enjoying it. Mm -hmm. it's the best um, podcast in the world. Best, po best, best podcast, podcast in the world. Yeah. Um, I don't know what just happened. That's to me. it for this week. Next week, we're going to have some more uh, exciting announcement stuff. We've got a new sponsor for next week. Mm -hmm. It's also three of us are going to have like a little birthday celebration. Technically, yeah. Rhiannon's is much later in the month, but we're just going to group it all up. Yeah, Feb why births. not? Feb births. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of birthday boys uh, and girls. Right? Um, February 5th. Shall I do a little recap? Please do. Well, we do need to play the Aerobis intro video, First. and I am really hoping that it doesn't cause any problems. But let's play that if we can. See Sam, you, see you please. Later. Hello, welcome to Erois D D campaign. A little recap on what happened last week, especially for Katie, who wasn't yes. here. I have given her a little recap already, but it never hurts. Our heroes have been exploring the city of Kelly's Rest, one of the largest settlements on the continent of Suvona, and a major stop on the trade road leading towards their destination of Gold Throne. After exploring the city, meeting a group of guardians surviving together, witnessing a match of a magical dueling sport spell clash and a stormy battle with an orc priest, the party found their way to the Temple of Hesper, the god of magic, the sky, and knowledge. The party spoke with Dean Simon, the resident priest librarian, and the old scholar in his library seemed to have been neglected by the townsfolk over the years, but the Dean's knowledge seemed vast. They discussed the Eterna, um, including Nightfrost, the new magical accoutrement of uh, uh, Lucius, um, and Dean Simon revealed that his mentor had been studying and researching them, even as far as getting information from an Eterna themselves revealing that uh, they are led by a group called the Eternal Triumvirate, uh, of which Nova carries a shard of one of their beings. 
However, during your discussions, a group of religious followers of Palador arrived and demanded Dean Simon come with them to the Abbey of Flame, on orders of somebody called the Abbotess. Believing the group's intent to be evil, the party spoke up and the religious zealots rebuked with staggering violence. A combat ensued, and whilst the party was victorious, the Temple of Hesper's interior was ruined in the fire. The next morning, you awoke to news that the abbot, the previous leader of the Palador faith in Kelly's Rest, had passed away and the abbotess was now in charge. Mm. And I believe that there was vague plans made to go and seek out the guardians, um, following up a lead that perhaps uh, they know somebody who has secrets to extend guardian lifespan. There is also a spell clash match, oh, yeah. or, or more, that needs to uh, take place. Initiation. Yeah. Um, and then anything else that you guys really want to do in the town? Uh, We're so, also gonna wait for an answer. Uh, so from uh, uh, Malika Dornbless, the field warden, who to was... step in on yes. this. On the test problem. Yeah, yes. she was essentially going to hire us as mercenaries outside of the city's law. Yes. Uh, well, yeah. she mentioned to you that the mayor of the town of the city, sorry, was somewhat in the pocket of the of the church. And yeah. Um, there are many different faiths within Kaylee's Rest, but you can tell that Palador has a very big presence, and it has this fortified, independent abbey which is attached to the city. Um, that has its own walls and everything. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be the powerhouse of this particular city. Uh, it is the middle of the day. For the long night, it's surprisingly warm. Have With the storm that's recently just passed, uh, the ground is still met, wet and muddy, but is beginning to firm up as for once, there is sun in the sky and no clouds around. Um, the mm. storm seems to have blown them all away and you have a brief moment of respite from the foul weather. The city itself is busy, but there is an edge to it. There is this lingering tension following uh, last night. The trails of smoke can still be seen kind of coiling up from the city along North Street um, that can only be the burnt out remains of the Temple of Hesper. People glance at each other, not quite sure if they're neighbors or their fellows, which side they might fall on. We join the four of you uh, at a tavern uh, on North Street, a very lush, uh, very fancy tavern that uh, you'd chosen to stay at to make sure that any enemies you'd made were not led back to Arvel and Valor, two uh, companions that you brought with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe uh, that you were discussing what you wanted to do and where you wanted to go and who's doing what. Uh, so I hand this over to you, heroes. <laughs> Heroes. Heroes oh. is an interesting choice of words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every time we go to, we kind of destroy. <laughs> uh, you don't destroy, one way or another. you get involved into problems, yeah. but so far you've tried to do your best. I think that's what I said last time, is like every time we come to, it's all cheery, and then suddenly there's a change and everyone is miserable. <laughs> we're just in the middle of it. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> See ya! But we're problem wanna, solvers. Wanna set up a charity? Problem solvers. Yeah. That is a, a way of phrasing Team name, yes. yeah. problem solvers. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I guess a positive spin is people are unhappy because they've found out that there has been problems that we've brought to light. Yeah, they didn't know. <laughs> um, about sure, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good way of looking at light. it. Yeah. yeah, problem uncovers. We're um, we're we're yeah. like WikiLeaks. Problem seekers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but for every time we go to <laughs> town um, leaks, you yeah. can you can hear that the very distant cries, uh, the calls of a town crier that had already given you word about the abbot's passing away and the abbotess taking power. Um, and you can begin to hear that kind of echoing uh, through the city streets. Mm -hmm. uh, North Street is very affluent. Uh, you can see many merchants opening up their stores. Uh, there is uh, several, most of them seem to be like local artisans. They produce, you know, food, jewelry, things that wouldn't necessarily interest you normal, you weary adventuring travelers. Um, but you do see that there is a, uh, the Dale Geld Company, which is a kind of Suvona spanning empire of trade stores that cater specifically to the more adventurous uh, person, uh, yeah. soldiers, weapon, uh, you know, adventurers, that sort of thing. Um, you also know that there is another store here uh, which is run by Rose Meadow, the centaur, uh, who is a alchemist oh, and yeah. potion maker. Yeah, don't worry about um, it. Although her store is not on the main that. street. I'm not going there. I've never been there. No, no matter. Don't worry about it. Don't know who she is. <laughs> don't think we'd get on. I don't think you, you, you and Century Me and Century met her, yeah? no. You'd love her. <laughs> Um, Probably would. But, yeah. So, yeah. Sentry would. And uh, she would love Sentry, more mm. to the point. Nova seems very quiet and distant um, and mentions to you that she is thinking of remaining at home. Oh, yeah? Uh, at the tavern for today. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Nova, you should really come along with us today. No, I just. 
you know, I've been thinking and it's, I just, I feel like I need to spend some time with Tian Gong and there's a few things I want to think about. I was also thinking of maybe going to the temple and helping them kind of recover what books they can. Um, but I know you all have different things that you need to do today. I just, I feel like I need some, some me time. No, I really think you should come <laughs> along with us. To what though? To where? To where are you going? Fresh air. The sun's out now. So are you, are you... And you've got the spell things to do, Nova. I don't think I'm going to do spell clash. I've been thinking about it and... What? That was a hundred gold. I again. use... <laughs> well, Arvel can, Arvel can just give it. He can take the money back. We've not spent it yet. That's true. Only Lucius is the one who's spent the money. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yes, that um, is true. I want to worry about. Well, I've just been yeah. thinking that <laughs> Tian Gong is how I use my spells and it feels wrong to use him or use them to fight for something like a sport. Like, it, it just, just doesn't feel right. It's not like your magic, Lucius, which is part of you. This is, I'm, I'm using somebody else's power. It, it just doesn't seem right. Well, I use the power of Siaska. I'm just but a vessel. A Siaska? You're not a priest? Yes, but Siaska blesses us with sorcerer's power, right? When we're born. I, I mean, I don't know. We're elephant. Okay, sure. That's what I believe. <laughs> All right. Still, I don't think I'm going to do Spell Clash. It does Sorry. kind of make sense. If she's going into Spell Clash, and with an audience like that, with an Eterna casting spells, it probably will bring across the wrong attention. Then again, I you've got... Don't know what you're talking about. We always bring cross. the greatest kind of attention to ourselves. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but it does kind of mean that I now have to do it, because that was the entire point. Loads of us trying to join Spell Clash. Gives us a better chance of getting more out of it. Just be careful. Careful. Please. I mean, there's a shield, apparently. There is a shield. <clears throat> but there is also money and corruption. So we've got to be careful of that side of things. I can beat up the person if, if they beat you. I can beat them up in the back alley after the game. So you're my coach. The shield is for magic, not for hammers. Yeah. It, so. Do you think there's much similarity between you swinging a big old hammer and me casting one big spell? Absolutely not. No? So what could you teach me? You're just gonna smash things. Yeah, I just I'll just like hurt the people who wrong you. Like okay. I'll be like your security guard. Okay. Yeah. And I'll me. try not to lose another eye in Spell Clash. That'd be very say that. <laughs> Actually, he's he's two body parts down already. That's that's no, very true. Don't make it worse. That's far too we should, rash a we statement. We shouldn't lose any more. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, maybe it's a bad idea. It's fine. Maybe I'll exploit we should... it. Maybe I'll. It's a Do you want to take my hammer with you? Yeah. No, I won't be able to carry that. It's yeah, huge. No, that's true. You won't I'll exploit it. it. I'll go into the arena like, oh, owie, everything hurts, Ooh, and then enough. bam. I like that. Guiding that's light. Tactic. That's a good facade. And maybe my my my, my name could be like. Miserable little bird man. <laughs> and everyone will just immediately feel bad for me. Did we not decide on The little bird who could. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who said that. Nova. Nova. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, maybe that could be a strategy. Well, the spell clash is until tonight anyway, so I think it's... Um... That's true. And we've got to survive walking through the streets. Uh, yes, it almost anyway. seems like the neighbours are at unease, as if they're not sure which side their fellow neighbours are on. What? At our knees? What? What does that mean? On ease. I thought you said they were at our knees. <laughs> oh. Well, they were, might be after spell clash. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to my room now. <laughs> then probably head upstairs for the best. But right. no, you can't make fun remarks. <laughs> no, I can't. I'll have to wait until another no, NPC <laughs> joins you inevitably. Mm. Um, so, uh, so well, Sentry, you heard about Breeze. Breeze is about yeah. here. Um, I'd like to find Scout. Okay. Yeah, let's do that, Scout. That's the plan. Yes, because Breeze probably doesn't want to see us, but we can go see Scout. And maybe we can scout behind Scout and Sentry. I don't think we want to send Sentry on our own, though. Personally, we don't I'd have a prefer choice. to go with you. We can't, really. Why? Breeze doesn't like her. I mean, if, if, if Breeze no. is holding information this important, and he will refuse to give it away if everyone is there, it's kind of... We'll be in the shadows. I mean, I'll see what he yeah. says. We're stealthy. You're stealthy. We'll be in a dash distance. Ava is quite stealthy, actually. Stealthy. We can stealth. Oh, they'll just shoot in that bed, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the problem. Ayla knows how to hide herself, but bad Ayla's luck. Ayla's great. Bad luck <laughs> seems to <laughs> kind of get in its way. Okay, so you guys want to head to the Guardian's house yeah. uh, on South yeah. Street? Okay. So you make your way outside and tra travel through the city. Um, not much has changed. 
still feels the same way. It's bustling. It's a very busy place, lots of merchants to and fro. Uh, you have to pass through, heading down from North Street, you head into the Queen's Plaza, uh, where you can see that some sort of very hastily built stage is being built, and there are uh, people in white and red robes uh, giving out small parchments, which seem to have uh, a very hastily made and printed, just very simple statement, like a poster, uh, which just says, uh, Abbot, uh, Abbotess Braylon to speak tonight, um, Queen's Plaza, on the recent events. And it's, that, it's, those are like literally the only words, like somebody's hand stamped a bunch of There's pamphlets. There's no time on there, or? Um, it's sundown, it says. We should definitely get somebody to hear that, at least. Mm. But that's gonna clash with spell clash. Good, I like the play on words. Um, what? <clears throat> or play on words. I mean, it, spell clash, clash with spell clash. What? It's clash. You said, you said clash. We, we should probably be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's less that they don't really hand it out to you. You kind of like probably catch one that's on the ground or something like that. But you can just see them giving out these pamphlets around. Um, and it seems to be something of a, of a hot topic. Around I mean, does anyone it. have any second glances towards us? Make if a perception I'm, check. If I'm percepting. Um, oh, I have a disadvantage. As if there are unease, I don't know which side we're on. Uh, nine. Nine? It's difficult to say, you're kind of looking around and... I mean, you definitely notice people looking at you. It's hard to tell whether or not it is in a distaste or if it's just a, oh look, there's a bunch of strange travelers kind of thing. <laughs> we do like, look quite strange, you are, let's be you are an odd bunch walking around. Um, so there is definitely looks. How much of that is a uh, kind of dis disproving look, you're not quite sure. Okay. Um, but there's definitely people looking your way. And you notice that there are quite a few of the Harvest Guard around around the Queen's Plaza as well. Oh, um, okay. Just keeping, keeping an eye on things. That's good. Uh, you head your, way, head your way and you see the, the large kind of central hill with the mausoleum of Queen Kaylee is right in the middle with these beautiful gardens kind of uh, around them. Um, and then you make your way into South Street. And South Street, once again, when you've been down here before, it's much more tailored to lower class uh, artisans, um, workers. The stores here are much more basic um, as you begin making your way down uh, past. You head past the Temple of Valena, which is this long workhouse, this long low ceiling stone workhouse with a large open terrace. Mm. Um, and as you go past that, you can see that there has definitely been not necessarily a sign of struggle, but uh, you can see that quite a lot of people are chattering around it. And there's talks about um, people visiting last night. Uh, you know that Mason, who is the priest of that temple, um, refused to go with the the people that came from the abbey as well. Um, and there's a bit of a commotion around that as well. Mm. But you turn down into several small alleyways and make your way to the very edges of the walls, where you remember there being a rundown ramshackle house that was being rebuilt by the guardians themselves. Um, you don't see any signs of the other warforged outside. Uh, but you do hear the kind of heavy clunking of uh, the a, iron giant. of a very large <laughs> guardian uh, who seems to be lingering near the back. Um, and you just hear this kind of long rattling of chain and kind of stomping uh, of you know clash of metal and stone. Um, and this large, wide face kind of peers around from behind the back of this house and kind of like looks at you, Sentry, and it nods. No, I forgot he was here. Yeah. I've forgotten his name. Terrifying. Smasher. Smasher, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. You can hear like the drag of this heavy kind of like flailed ball and chain behind him oh. as he kind of stomps around to the front of the house. Uh, he gestures with his one working kind of hand towards it. Inside. Others. Excellent. Thank you, mate. Can Sad. What? Why? What? what? Tracker. And he just thumbs inside. Uh-oh. Uh, are we allowed in as well? Uh yeah, he nods, he's like, friends. Thank, thank you. Um, Let me see if we can cheer him up. Okay. He, he kind of looks at you, he just shakes his head, but then nods um, and just steps to the side, goes back into under his tarpaulin, which you can now see at the back of the house. They've kind of got this just like little cover for him to sit under. Uh, stepping up to the door, you open it. There doesn't appear to be a lock in place. It's just like a loose wooden door that's been hinged on. Um, you push it aside and inside you can see the other guardians, Chipper, Sweep, uh, Scout, um, sat around or stood around uh, a single guardian who is sat on a chair, eyes dull of colour, no glow, um, just kind of s sat there completely motionless. Uh, Tracker, this older guardian that you'd met before, 
just kind of stood in the ch sat in the chair, powered down, head slightly drooped, no no magical glow to its being, um, which you've only seen in previously dead guardians. Uh, the others kind of look <sighs> up and they kind of like nod their head. Scout kind of walks up. He's like, "Hey, how's it going?" Hey, what? Scout. How, how how are you? Um, what's happened to uh, Well, he shut down, but he's done this before. Sometimes it it can last a few hours. Uh, we're not sure if it's you know the big final shutdown or if it's just one of these temporary blips he has. I mean, we know that he's pretty close to his his end time, but um. Yeah, we just don't know. So we normally just put him, make him comfortable, and we leave him until you know he reactivates. Sometimes, so yeah, I guess we just gotta wait and see. Um, did you get my message about yeah, Breeze? Yeah, that's why we came here. Oh, great. Yeah, obviously he kind of gestures towards the others. Like we've been talking more and more, and you know Tracker's been getting worse and worse. We just think that well, maybe we should just take him to see Breeze so he can speak to him. You know, I know he's not sure about it, but. Well, we just think that if there's a chance that they can expand his, extend his life, we should do that, you know? He's got so much more to teach us, and he's got so much more that I know he wants to do, but I just, I worry that he's just giving up on hope, you know? I hope, well, hopefully he gives you hope. And that's why we'd like to try and extend him as well. Sweeper kind of nods her. She's like, that's very kind, thank you. Uh, we know that Breeze is around, but he said he's only going to be around for another day or so. Um, when we mentioned you, Sentry, he said that he'd love to meet you, but he is a bit wary about non-Guardians. We think that he might have had some bad experiences with, with humanoids before, um, and he asked that he could just meet you alone um, before we go and we bring Tracker to him tonight. So uh, once it gets dark, he said that you can find him in the gardens around the mausoleum, um, and then around midnight we'll take Tracker to see him. He wants to perform the ritual away from non-Guardians and humanoids. So it makes him a bit too uncomfortable. He could perform the ritual right there and then? That's what he said to us, yes, but he just, he needs us to be sure that that's what we and what Tracker wants. And do you trust Breeze? We don't have a reason not to. He's always been kind to us. Uh, he's always, you know, he brings by a little bit of coin and, you know, he does his best to help us whenever he can. And there's and nothing... He seems, seems a nice fellow. He seems like he's got our best interests in heart. Okay. Chipper just kind of nods, he's just like, I mean, I didn't really know many other Guardians after I got reactivated. He does seem a little strange. Um, Breeze definitely isn't his original name. We think he may have chosen it for himself. Uh, it doesn't match the kind of names that we normally have. Mm. Um, and he just said that uh, he wanted to get rid of his old life, so... Hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Is there anything else? I mean, Sentry, would you be willing to meet with him? It'd be great to see if you can get a read on everything and you, let us I know. Can, yeah, I can let you know how it goes, yeah. Yeah, well, I think he said meet him after darkness, like uh, Sweep said at the mausoleum uh, in the gardens. And then we'll, we're supposed to meet him just outside of town, outside okay. the North Gate, um, later tonight. And as you're kind of looking around, there's this kind of flicker, this, this almost like a pulse that comes out of track, like this. <laughs> And you watch as his eyes begin to glow with green light again. He kind of sits up and he looks around. Give me insight checks, actually. Anybody who's watching. Oh, boy. <laughs> natural 20. Natural 20. Hey. 22. 22. 22, natural 20. 17. 17? 14. 14. Pretty much all of you really quickly pick up on this he does not realize where he is. Like you see this kind of recognition that he doesn't know where he is and he's frightened. Um, he immediately kind of kicks back off the chair, pulls out a, a sword from like a sheath at his side. He just flips it over and he's just looking around. Uh, he's just like, where, where the hell am I? Where, what are you, what's going on? Where's my, where's my unit? And he's like looking around. Uh, when he sees Ayla, Quill and Lucius, he flips the blade to you almost like completely not recognizing you. It's just like, they're, they're with the Court of Shadows. The rest of you guardians form up behind me. And he's like backing up like into a defensive stance. He's like, where's my bow? And he's like looking around, unable to find something. Um, can I jump in and like try and hold his arms back? So you should just try and grab him? Yeah, yeah sure, give me a strength check though. Cause he's gonna try and resist. 
Uh, uh, athletics would athletics. be. Athletics. Cool. That's a 19. Yeah, 19. With your superior strength, you overpower him. You grab his arm, flip it behind him, and like push him into a military hold. Um, and he's just like, what are you doing? Are you working with them, you traitor? And he's like struggling against you. Tracker, uh, calm down. We're your friends. I don't know you. You're not part of my unit. He's like struggling around. Where's my, where's my CO? And he's desperately looking around, unsure what's going on. Um, I really don't want to interfere here, Sentry. I don't know what to say. Uh, Scout, uh, what normally happens? Like, what the hell is that thing? And he's looking at Quill like... Tracker, we met you outside... Where? Is it some sort of... It's one of Starbane's weird creatures. We met like you outside Callie's Rest. We helped you defeat the... What wife. the hell is Callie's Rest? Okay. And he's like... Tracker, calm down. Scout... Uh, what's going Scout. on? I think we should leave. We should probably... Us three. <laughs> Let's leave Sentry with it. It's just like, he, he, just, he, doesn't, he just doesn't seem to know what's going on. And even the other Guardians, he does not seem to recognize whatsoever. Yeah. It's, it's definitely something's triggered. Flicked back into his memory. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And he's like struggling against you. Give me another athletics check just to see, because he's, he's fighting against you. Uh, 11. 11. So he manages to break free. Um, and I think at this point, he would try and shove you. So give me a strength saving throw. Okie dokie. He's going to try and shove you away from him. Like, 11 again. Okay, so he goes to shove you, but you manage to kind of hold firm. He goes to shove you and pulls the blade out, um, and, and he I leaps to the side. I in the way of Quill and Lucius and just he like, in a defensive, but not, okay. um, not looking intimidating. He looks at you. Let's see how much you might remember. He looks at you, and he's, he's like eyeing you. He's just like, you look like you're one of those... Are you one of those shadow elves? He's like looking around like, that one, are you some sort of traitor? Why are you with them? And he's like glancing around like... Look, we mean no harm. We're not with any sort of court of shadows. But we'll just leave now, okay? It's almost like he doesn't want you to leave, like he doesn't trust you to leave, but he's also not sure where he is. He seems extremely confused. Why don't you give me a persuasion check, Lucius? Just because mm -hmm. you're trying to like, you know, calm him down. In a Twelve way. plus. Um, five, seventeen. He just kind of like looks at you, he's like, get out, get out now, where am I? You, I know you, you're one of the Solven units, uh, Sentry. Yes, I remember, Sentry. I remember seeing you in a parade. Why are you here? Why are they here? We're, 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 we're not in, we're in, a, we're in a Rois, we're in a new place now, this is not there. What, what about the war, what's going on? The war is over, this is... What? He just seems to, and then when you say the war is over, there's this kind of like, not realization, but he looks past Sentry into a corner of the room where there's nothing. There's just a few shelves. And he's, he looks over Sentry's shoulder, he's like, who are you? What are you talking about? What, the Prime? He just like, starts looking, he's just like, I, I've never heard of you before. What do you mean? Who's this? And he like points behind you like, do you know them? I, I don't see anybody, there's nobody there. Tracker, there's no one there. There is, the, the, the gold guardian behind you. The, I've never the, seen the, one like it. The, 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 the prime. He like, he like looks, and he like listens. He's like, city of glass? I don't know where that is. What are you talking about? And then he looks around confused. What's happening to, and then he just shuts down. It's like mid-sentence, just the light goes and he falls forward and just slams into the ground. Oh, okay. Um, we should probably pick him back up and... Yeah. yeah, the other three Guardians just look terrified. Does this happen a lot? Is this... Scout's like, no, no, he's no. never done anything like this. He's, when he shuts down, he just goes silent. He just doesn't do anything. We need to get him to Spree's soon. I don't think you have a choice. I think you have to take him there now. Yeah. I don't know, as as, well, as soon as we, can. we can try and go to the mausoleum gardens, but Breeze, I don't know where he is the rest of the time. He's said to meet us outside the city gates tonight, but not till midnight. Well, 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 we just have to bring him along, otherwise he could, you, you guys could be in danger. Should we, maybe we could tie him up or something here, or? Maybe, or I can, I can, or if he comes with me, I can at least keep him under control. Can Smasher hold him? Yeah, Smasher probably could, yeah. He's strong enough. Tracker's not super strong. Uh, he's he's uh, fights with the bow mainly, um, so maybe I think Smasher can probably keep him under control. But if you want to take him to see Breeze, but it's up to you. I, he's never done anything like this. I'm the only combat outside of Smasher. I'm the only other one that knows how to fight. Chipper and Sweep, they don't know what to do. They, yeah. They're civilians. Were you in his unit before? No, no, no. I was I was 
really freshly made. I was really new at the end of the war. Track had been serving for a few years before the Sundering happened. Mm. He's told me a little bit about it, his unit that he was with. Um, if he's never done this before, it's, it's not a good sign. I think that Breeze is He's mentioned probably... the Prime stuff before, but he's never been in a memory like that. He oh. says that it's more like dreams. When he's been shut down, when he's, when he's uh, quiet, Sometimes he says that he's heard about this prime. He's seen a golden guardian before, but he's never... When he wakes up before, does he forget where he is? No, no, he knows, he knows where he is. It's like he's gone to sleep, like we all have to sometimes, where we have to power down. It's normally just like that. You can see Scout's really shaken up. Mm. Breeze is in town for only another day or no. so. I don't think we have time to wait for Tracker to give his opinion on it. No, let's take him now. And at this point, the Tracker we met, well, the one that declined the offer before, <laughs> he's not there, at least last time we woke up. Yeah, you um, could I roll a check on the City of Glass as well? Sure. What would that be? <laughs> I think history. that would be, yeah, history. We've heard that before. Yeah, I've, I've mentioned it before. That, certainly. Uh, history 15. 15. Very similar to the last time when you were, when you first got that scrap uh, of information yeah. torn from a <coughs> book, some sort of scriptures maybe. City of Glass <coughs> doesn't bring any immediate bells, Sorry. but there's a couple of things you can extrapolate. Thinking about it, Tracker didn't seem to recognize it and Sentry doesn't know it either, which yeah. would indicate that it's not from before the Sundering. It must be from post Sundering, yeah. which means it's a new name. There's definitely nothing like that on Suvona, and there's definitely nothing like that on Voxar, which is the continent you're most familiar with. Mm. If anything, the Starfall Archipelago might be the place to go. That, the Starfall Archipelago is a series of islands that once made up the very heart of Erois before the Sundering. Oh, um, and when the, when the Sundering happened and the lands were split apart, the archipelago was basically formed out of this cluster of islands. They are the closest to the, to the point of impact. Um, they were once where the capital of all of Eroes was, this kind of grand city where Siaska and the gods lived. Yeah. That was destroyed completely. It was the very center of the blast. Um, but it could be that the City of Glass... There's a lot of mystical stuff that happens in the Starfall Archipelago. Is it one of those places of like not very Charted. well explored? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very difficult to get to as well sometimes. Dangerous to get to, isn't it? Yeah. The yeah. seas are very dangerous around the center of Eroes, around the, the, the point of the Sundering, mm. um, and the winds aren't very favorable around there either. Most of the wind currents that the Sky Cities and airships follow drift around the middle because yeah. it's Hesper sent them up to protect them from the blast. Um, and I don't suppose what we know of Solvin is... You don't know, no. There's, you, that's the mystery that Sentry's been pursuing, and um, you're not sure you have any information on that okay. currently. You'll need to find other people and ask around. Yeah. How long is it until... So we're in like early afternoon at this early point? Early morning. Early morning. This point, yeah. Okay. You've got a whole so day. Got a whole day. But you can always just say, like, hey, we're just going to kill time. We're going to wait here for a few hours I and stuff. If we leave him with Smasher, at least that is temporary going to hold him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if Breeze isn't going to be around until nightfall anyway, we can go about other business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scout's like, all right, all right, let's uh, chip her. You and me take him out to Smasher and we'll try and make him comfortable and make sure Smasher knows to keep him, keep him under control. Scout, come find us. If anything happens to track it. We yeah, where can we, where where's the best place to find you guys? Where are you gonna be? What's on our list? <laughs> um, the spell clash arena. <laughs> yeah, I know where that is. Yes. All we'll right. Be around there. Okay, I can come find you there. Sure. He just like nods his head. He's like, thank you. No problem. We'll come and help if anything goes wrong. Okay. He just nods. He just looks very you know taken back and you know they don't have facial expressions, but the manner of his voice and his body language, like it's all slumped down. Yeah. Um, he just looks a bit shaken. It'll be okay. He just nods. He's just like, thanks, Sentry. Just, okay. just want the old tracker back. That's okay. We'll get your family back together again. Just nods. Okay. Lucius, are you starting to feel like Spell Clash might be getting away a little bit? What? Getting in the way a little bit, Spell Clash? A little um, bit. Um, what else are we doing, though? Well, <laughs> I mean, well, there's the, the whole Abby thing. There's the Abby. Hey. There's Breeze. 
at the moment, I think. We're waiting if, for if, We've got the of full Of course, day. if Breeze were to come along or we were to find him, by all means, then hands down we'll go do that. Trachan needs to be saved. We could look and see if we can find him earlier. Maybe. Let's do that first. Could be. Before spell clash. Do we have any other? Still got clues? time. <laughs> spell clash is in this is like yeah, so sundown, exactly. afternoon, late afternoon time. Yeah, around They're the same time the as the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys can head to the mausoleum if you want the gardens. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you want to do? Can we do that. Let's yeah. do that. Okay. I, I will say, away from the other guardians. Okay. Yeah. You guys can head outside while they're taking care of them easily now. He saw the prime again. Yes, he did. Yeah. He was speaking as if it was in the room. Mm -hmm. I feel like the manifestations of the Prime get more potent the closer to the end of life the Guardian finds himself in. So I feel like this time, this one, this vision that he had was the most potent I've ever heard of, well, being in the room, in the space. But the vision did give him a, an order, a direction, told him to go to the city of glass, yes. apparently, so it can't be the end just yet. Would Tracker have known about a city of glass? I mean, before. Don't is this new information? If this is, there is a prime, and it's giving these guardians at the end of their life purpose. Can you make an arcana check for me, Lucius? 11 plus 2. 13. You do know, probably from watching your father and sister study magic, because they studied magic, you know, they you've always had it as naturally as a gift, whereas they kind of studied it more and more. Skipped a few classes. Yeah, but you do know that there are spells that can send messages across great distances. There are even rumors of very powerful magic that can create almost dream-like states, um, where they can talk and you can converse with somebody Goodness. across great distances. And that, the idea of the idea of receiving some sort of vision. I mean, you've obviously there are very famous tales of uh, people receiving visions from the gods. Quill has said that he's had visions of Hesper and things like that before. But you do know got that there are down and got a god yeah. vision. <laughs> yeah. Ayla, that was Ayla Ayla last week. <laughs> but there are also ways for very powerful spellcasters to do it. Um, so it's not entirely impossible that somebody sent a message rather than him just having some sort of crazy vision. It's a possibility. Sentry. Do you know of any guardians that can cast spells, use magic like I do, or Quill does? Not that I know of. You know that there would be guardians that can do it, yeah. There were, there were guardians who were trained in the use of arcane magic. Yeah, there were guardians who were trained in magic, yeah. We could, yeah. The, exactly what he just said, yes. <laughs> no, but I appreciate putting it into her own words. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, Daddy and my sister uh, actually used to trained in that sort of thing, sending messages across vast distances. So if there's a chance that the Prime is real and is sending messages out to guardians near the end of their life or near some sort of revelation or something. So would they be able to do it with a visual? Absolutely, yes. I don't know. I didn't read the studies, okay. but I assume Daddy and my sister could definitely do that. They're so very powerful. So it's not a manifestation. It's, a, it's an actual... It could be, it could be. This is just, again, this is what, with a 13, yeah. this is some information Lucius has about how magic can work. Um, and you're not it's sure if they can send visions or images or if it's just words, you don't know. How far can you send those messages? Uh, really far. Could someone send it around to anywhere in Arois? I'm sure Daddy could. Sure. I, yeah. I definitely know the answer. Seems... I'm not giving you any more information. That 13 is what you get. I know. <laughs> you should, you should that. That's what you get with a 13. With enough power and enough arcane energy that the Guardian store, maybe, possibly. But no. does that mean the Prime then has a link to all Guardians? How does a Prime, how does, how does a prime send messages to Guardians they've never mm. met before? How does the Prime yes. know at the point when they have to send that message? Does, does this mean the Guardian can sense the Matrix or something? Possibly. Either way. I it's... think we need to look opposite. Why do all guardians see the same prime? Mm. Why? And also, at least three that we know yeah. of. Yeah. And they all have the same description. Three guardians who've never met each other before until. We've all seen the same thing. And also, what will they find in the City of Glass? Is it a resting point? Is it. Lots of cups and. Warm plates. Well, that would be lovely. Glass plates. Glass plates. 
but they'd be Hot warm. Chocolate. Too. Oh. Yes. I mean, that sounds like a century <laughs> heaven to me. Melting point. Yeah. Am I to believe that this conversation is happening whilst well, you're we're making walking your walking way? Yeah. To the buzz of the uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. So the the centre of town, the Queen's Plaza. I've described it before. It's this large open area with oh, this, this gardens in the middle. Um, the gardens themselves. So the the mausoleum is a beautiful round building of polished stone, decorated with beautiful gardens of vibrant blue flowers. It rests atop a small hill at the heart of town, a part of the city, sorry, and paths lead up to the rounded mausoleum from gates, uh, like a big iron gate that weaves around the whole gardens. The gardens themselves, kind of imagine like a botanical garden, thick with flowers and plants and, and trees, um, all based on this hill. So the paths all kind of have like small inclines and steps that make their way round. Um, every so often within the garden, uh, there are statues of a young woman in flowing robes carrying an open tome in front of her, um, or a staff, or some sort of other magical apparatus, wands, orbs, crystals, some sort of mage woman. When you get there, um, it is open to the public. Uh, there are guards. There are harvest guard positioned all the way along the fence, kind of at the entrances. Uh, they check you over. Um, they will inquire to check your bags and check any weapons that you have on you. They you know, note them down, remark on them and things like that, and then they let you into the gardens themselves. There's a heavy scent of lavender and these blue flowers, this kind of floral scent that permeates amongst these gardens, and it's quiet. Almost as if magically so, the sounds of this bustling city are dimmed, as it all just falls away into a peaceful serenity. You begin searching through the gardens and you can see every now and again there are young couples or a family making their way along it as well, investigating it, exploring it as families do. And eventually you find your way to the very top where there is a large white marble mausoleum building with a rounded dome top. Uh, again, it seems all open to the public and you can see a few people wearing um, black robes with the symbol of a silver lantern with a single star in the middle of it, the symbol of Kilara, the goddess of the dead. Um, they kind of nod their head respectfully to you, but they don't seem to talk too much. Instead, you're left to peacefully wander and, and mediate on yourselves. Inside the mausoleum itself, um, you can see uh, it's a large open room with a single marble stone sarcophagus, a plain square shape in the middle. On the far wall behind the sarcophagus, behind a thick pane of glass, is a beautiful golden staff, uh, curved with a crescent moon with a single gemstone at its middle, and then spilling down there is almost like a, a spiral of gold that winds its way along the handle, tipping in another gemstone at the base of the staff itself. Um, with plaques written underneath it. The walls are covered in frescoes that depict a young woman's life. Um, we see three sisters, her being the youngest, the smallest of them, um, a happy family. But as the frescoes go around, it details the story of the War of the Three Sisters. Uh, the three sisters were the, the children of, the, of a former king uh, who died suddenly. And the three sisters basically became eligible for the throne. The eldest was uh, cruel and, and a little bit power hungry. The middle sister was incredibly devoted to Palador and then the third sister was a quiet mage. Um, the sisters warred for the throne and it was Callie's intelligence and her cunning and her knowledge of magic that eventually saw her succeed and lead Suvona and Ruxfeld into a, an era of prosperity. Um, she was regarded as a very wise ruler, um, but she was always plagued by the noble lines that felt that they had been cheated out of succession. Um, and we see this kind of detailed on fresco. She fought in battles, she was a war wizard, but she was also uh, very good at political and court intrigue, and there's different frescoes depicting that. Um, the actual mausoleum itself is empty of people, um, apart from like these things, and then you just see the priests wandering around. Um, what would you guys want to do? Are you trying to actively find Breeze, like looking around to see any sign of him yeah. and things? Okay, I think that that would probably, your best bet there is to make, let's make this a group skill challenge. So you can use perception, survival, or any other skill you can think of that would help you try and track down trace of this person, this guardian. So Breeze is someone that comes to Kelly Trist quite often, isn't he? You heard that he has come by here a few times, yes. Okay, so I might try and speak to Speak to one of the priests. Some of the priests and see if they okay. have any idea of a guardian that... Okay. Well, you walk up, so yeah, so, and what are you asking them? You're just asking if they've seen a guardian or... Uh, well, a, a guardian 
called Breeze. Okay. <laughs> come here, apparently does his work here every time he arrives. Um, the person that you speak to is a half-elven woman. She's like, I'm very sorry, sir. No, I, there is a few guardians within Callie's Rest, but um, they've not really come here. This is generally seen as a bit of a place of historical value and of, of faith as well. Okay. Um, but no, I can't say that uh, anyone around matching that description has been around here. Certainly not during opening hours. Um, the mausoleum okay. is closed at night, and I've heard reports that a few people... Uh, and go into the gardens at night, but we try and have our guards keep an eye on that, I'm afraid. Okay, uh, and night time it closes. Okay, that's good, okay. Just kind of that's a little bit of information. <laughs> yeah, okay, so while Quill's doing that, any other ideas of what you guys want to do? I'm actively distracted thinking about the Prime. Okay, so you're just so I'm, you're like... I'm like really thinking of that. Okay, Sentry? Um. Can maybe like try and call out, but like use persuasion, see if he's. So you, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't need to use his skill if you just kind of want to walk around and be like, "Hello, Breeze," like yeah. just literally calling out to anywhere. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Let's see. Okay, you spend like a little bit of time wandering the gardens, just calling out. Occasionally, you get odd looks from wandering families who like look over at you, but take a stealthy or very fast-paced <coughs> walk away. Um, there doesn't seem to be any response. You're just calling out to the trees, the sun overhead. Um, it doesn't, doesn't seem to resonate. Okay. Ayla? Um, I think I'm just going to do um, a perception check, check to see if I see anything. Any, any but traces. also I want to... Actually, can I make it a survival check and see if I can see any... Any tracks. Yeah, anything, that, anything yeah, that, that would be would, more survival. Anything that would sort of suggest... Out of the ordinary, something, somebody was here that, you know, yeah. hasn't been like your typical tourist or typical traveller. Yeah, that'd yeah, be survival. Something 100%. that looks more mm -hmm. Guardian-like. Yeah, for sure. Than, uh, 19. 19. Yeah, 19's pretty good. You spend a bit of time wandering around with Sentry, who's calling out, and you're trying to keep an eye on the woods. And you've tracked wild beasts, and you've tracked you know, people that have been trying to get away from you, enemies, that sort of thing. You begin to find a few things. There are definitely traces that somebody has come through here and not followed the normal paths. You notice there are strange footprints um, in the soft earth amongst the gardens themselves, um, near to trees. And the footprints don't seem to match any sort of normal boot or footwear. They're almost just like a solid imprint with just a flat bottom completely, um, heavy set. You also find thin pieces of metal, very similar to the ones that might come off something like Echo. Um, these kind of thin strips of metal near the branches of a tree. Um, you catch like this glinting metal in, in the branches. You clamber up, pull it down, and you can see that something probably got wedged or stuck in the branches as it maybe flew past. Um, Interesting. I'll point that but out. Yeah, so nothing to necessarily follow back to a source. That's the only thing. Okay. It seems to come and go, um, and you catch these little sights and is things like that. Is it several places, or does it. Seems look to be like all around. One path that he takes. Actually, you know what? With a 19, I would say that near the back of the, the mausoleum building itself, you find more and more traces of the tracks, and you do see that built into the bottom section of the mausoleum itself thin line carved into the stone, disguised to look like it's an, a part of the marble blocks. But you catch footprints just in the gravel dirt, just this faint impression that almost was immiscible. And you kind of see that there is a door, a secret door built into the bottom of the mausoleum itself. And there are footprints that lead into that. That lead into the door. Mm. I mean, that's a hell of a 19. <laughs> yeah. No, I'd say 19 is pretty good. Yeah. He, he's not particularly, you get the sense that it depends on how well the person covers their tracks. As well. Yeah. I'll point that out. I door. mean, I guess. <laughs> Everyone. There's a, there's a, there's a, is it like a fairly big door? Or is it no, like a little? No, it looks like it's like a little thing that somebody, a medium sized creature like you, will have to crawl through. Right. Um, but it looks like, yeah, it looks like uh, some sort of um, thing. You don't see a way to open it from this side, though. Oh, okay, so it's like it's a way out. Almost like an exit, yeah. So it looks like all the tracks are going away from the door then? Very much okay. so. I mean, the priest has already said that he's sneaking into the... Well, they haven't said that. They, the, the place is closed when he's around. He, they're not meant to be here, so he's found some way in and out. Well, this is how he's getting out. 
Mm, um, how he's going in. Yeah. So, but we know that he's he's definitely been here. Yeah. This is the place. Um, but we probably shouldn't be hanging around Sentry if he's if he's around if his echo is floating around and watching us. Well, we don't want to. We don't know scare if him the off. Echo is anywhere. I'm sure, but we don't want to scare him off. If we're looking around for him, we're meant to be letting Sentry do this alone. Yeah. Lucius, do you have anything? He's just uh, off, just like, off the distance. Mm, yeah. Okay. Where can we go that we're close enough? But I mean, we won't be able to get into the place uh, at, at past the closing time. <laughs> um, actually, I don't even know how Sentry's meant to get here. No. Um, yeah, I would say that you would know that there would be guards stationed on the fences, like, you know, just to keep watch on it, because this is, there, there's definitely some sort of historical significance yeah. to this place. They're not just going to let people come in and trash it. Yeah. Maybe if, maybe if I leave Echo here while we leave, then maybe, then I can use Echo to see if Breeze comes in at night. You could use Echo to sneak through past the guards, at least. Could do. I mean, I don't know how you're meant to get in outside of that. No, but then if Echo can get through, then he can at least let Breeze know that I'm here. True. Yeah, and he, through Echo, could let you know that he's there. Yeah. Or you <laughs> could hide somewhere here, we can take Echo, and then you can communicate through Echo to us when he arrives. That's also very good. And we want to be able to know Echo. when to come yeah. to see you. Like, if you need us, we need to be able to know that you need us. Yeah, Beko, Echo, Beko. Beko. <laughs> Echo is independent enough that you can basically just say to him, like, hey, keep an eye on if you see this Guardian, let me know. Yeah. And he'll just send you a telepathic message of like, beep boop, it's here. You know. <laughs> beep, What's the range on Echo again? Uh, he does have a range. It's the same as Find Familiar, and I don't have my books with me. But uh, I can probably go... thousand feet. I can use D and D Beyond. Is it the same as the ones you gave me? Yeah, it's the same spell. It should have the same. It should have the range on there, uh, just because it's taking <coughs> time to load my stuff up. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, thirty feet. Oh, you can fly thirty. Feet. Thirty feet. Yeah. I think it is like hundred and twenty feet. But he can. Well, that's if you want to see through his eyes. Yeah. Well, you can. He's an independent creature. He can go wherever he wants to go. Just yeah. Getting yeah. But it's just the telepathy. He has like to be within, within a hundred feet. For hundred feet for the telepathy. Oh. But that doesn't mean that you can say to him like. Wait here until he shows up, then come and find me at Spell Clash, and then you can go. It's just the risk of like he'd have to make that journey on his yeah. own. Yeah. So depends on how much you want to risk him. Um, there's no. We only risk him just again. got him back. Got him back. <laughs> I mean, like what? Or, or, everyone... I do, or I just stay here and give you guys Echo, and you can see what's going I on. I think through. it makes sense the other way around. You come with us, Echo. Echo stays. stays. You're I mean, more valuable. Everyone said. I'm sorry, no offense, I love Echo, but at the same time, Sentry, we worry about you. Plus, mm. if you were tuning <laughs> Echo, Echo, I love you. <laughs> he just makes like a little noise as he bobs. Sorry. Do you but get a... he's also smaller. Yeah. He's going to be um... more discreet with the guards around. Do you get a read on Echo's memories when, you, when he returns to you? So, while Quill asked that, Lucius, Master Helen yes. what? I've been listening to your friend's conversation. Oh, you have? I wasn't listening. I could remain here and keep watch for the Guardian in my shadow form. Who is she? Why? Why are we staying here? They wish to find this person, Breeze. Oh, uh, yes, Breeze. That's right. They are discussing leaving the Guardian's flying creature, but I could remain. Yes, and you would literally be a shadow. Yes. Undisturbed. I am very Why, does it close at night or something? Yes. All oh, right. Excellent. Uh, we could just leave Nightfrost here. He's offered his services. Instead of Echo. Um, um, independent of you? Yes. So he could just do what he wanted here? Well, it could I be would a... Obviously, you, hear, you all hear uh, this now. Uh, I would obviously uh, fulfill Master, Lu Master, Master Lucius' wishes. I wish to be useful. I wish to prove that I am more than a killer. How uh, far can you stray from me? As far as you wish me to go. And can you communicate to me yes. through like this? Yeah. How far? I also know where you are at all times. I could find you easily. That's quite creepy, but fair. But what if, what if you're in spell class? In the middle of a 
Can you just communicate to all of us? Or does it have to be Lucius? I, it, at such a range, it would need to be with only Master Elanesto. To communicate with all of you, I must be present upon his person. There is a limited range for others. If I'm at Spell Clash, I will shout it as part of a spell. Mm. Breathe! Like, something like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Will you also be able to tell us what you think of Breeze? I mean, if he comes out and he's covered in spikes and maces, then that's something to be worried about. I will inform you if he is covered in spikes and maces. And, and he's flowing with lava. Very well. And he's yes. um, dangerous looking, just dangerous looking. Ignore. I mean, a lot of the guardians, like Smashers, huge and really intimidating. Very but kind. Very nice person. Very nice. Very nice guardian. Night so Frost, you only need to yes. give a like visual me. description. To You're a delight. Me. I'm a delight, yeah. but you don't know that looking at me. A lot of people judge like that. Very well, Master Elanesto, yes. Thank you. I can, I can do that, yeah. Well, a very kind of you, Night Frost. I wish, I wish to be useful to you, Master Elanesto. And that is, ab isn't wish, that very I useful, everybody? Yes. Please don't destroy me. I, why would I destroy you when you're so useful? But I did terrible things. You heard the Dean. He said that it may be better to destroy me. Can we all hear this? I may be corrupted, yes. Uh, Night Frost, um, thank you. You're welcome, Master Quill. We appreciate the help. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. Well, he knows where I am all the time. He does. That's a little bit strange. Can you see me all the time? Somewhat, yes. It is of a strange form, but yes. My You've vision. Seen is, my private parties. My vision is not like yours. I do not see you as the beings that you see each other as. I see your energy, your life essence. Nightfrost, yes. I have a quick question for you. Yes. Could you see a, a guardian of gold? Earlier. Yes. No. There was a strange magical presence, but not one that I could identify. Interesting. Have you seen one ever? A golden guardian? No. Uh, for many hundreds of years, I saw only darkness, Master Quill. Oh. Endless night and darkness and cold okay. beneath the lake and in the ship. Okay. I was dead, but not quite yeah. dead. Okay. Until then, I drained the life from those yeah. red girls. Yeah, no, yeah. I... It just <laughs> 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 it carries on. Yeah. We've gone on a tangent. Mm -hmm. it's, it was a bad one. There's a certain way of talking to Night Frost, which I'm starting to figure out now. Mm -hmm. uh, because he's such an eclectic being. <laughs> Never mention the past? Eclectic is a strange way to say that I am insane. He's very honest, too. He's very he honest. He's very, very honest. Insanity is... The Eternals do not have any real concept of deceit. There was no need for it amongst our society. You said you, you felt magical presence. Something like that. It, uh, it is uh, difficult to explain. That would back up your theory of potential messages, maybe. Yes. Next time... Spells. Next time anyone mentions primes, Quill, do detect magic. What? Oh, um... That? Yeah. Oh, I see. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. <laughs> I feel very switched on right that now. That's a very good idea, Lucius. I think Night Frost, you're, you're brushing up on me. You went very quiet for a while, Lucius. Were you just charging all of this up? Like no, I was thinking about the prime. For example, okay. if there is indeed a central single one prime which all other guardians were created from and thus had a link towards, would they be able to interact and therefore create an army of guardians who could kill every living thing on Whoa, the planet hey. or get, control them all at once? Know, but then I thought, no, because they're asking questions and saying, go to the City of Glasses, as if it's an option. Mm. So that's probably not, sorry, Sentry, uh, but it's not a thing. So ultimately, it's a being of his own entity which suggests that guardians are all their own person. I think I prefer it when Nova's here. Nova I goes on tangents in a much Nova, more logical way. Nova would know. <laughs> Nova <laughs> would. probably would have gotten punched by Tracker if she was near him when that happened. That's because true. she would have been in his face with a notebook. Oh, did anyone take any mm. notes, by the way, when no. that was happening? Oh, yeah. she's going to be so angry. Not at all. No. <laughs> she will be. Uh, that's fine. We'll describe it really, really well. Okay. Night Frost uh, can describe it. Night Frost knows, right? Yeah, I have a question right? for Night Frost. Somewhat. Yes. Somewhat. Um, yes, Guardian Sentry. Uh, uh, Night Frost, were you... Were you on or, or, were you with the Remnant during the Sundering? I was aboard the ship that you found me. We were bombarding a city from high up in the atmosphere. When the Sundering occurred, our power systems shut down. I okay, that's, felt a disturbance. My apologies. That's okay. Uh, what Do you know what city you're above? I did not know the name of the target location, no. It was used as a bastion for uh, food resources. I believe it was near current Savona. It, it must have been for us to crash here. Are, are there any other cities that you know that you were 
of fighting during the Sunder? <laughs> she's done it. Orders? She's done it. She's she's, <laughs> she's broken broken me in the campaign. Um, he's actually done it. <laughs> He has to look shit up now. Podcast listeners, the gritting teeth of Mark then. <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> fuck! <laughs> he when said you catch fuck the DM well. ever so slightly unawares with questions, these things happen. So, he will say that... <laughs> he does not know. <laughs> He's insane. He, he will say that his document is I too long and he can't find it. <laughs> trying to think of... Shut down. <laughs> I mean, God, a lot of those cities wouldn't exist. I'm trying to think if there's oh, any yeah. cities. I'm trying to. So he, pro he. Okay, here's what happens. He gives you a bunch of names that mean nothing to most of you. Sentry, at best, you maybe have heard of them. They were on other con on other continents. Um, Would there be other continents back then? No, not other continents, but like other uh, regions. Yeah. So, okay, this is where there is a ton of law which is in my head, and I don't think I wrote this down. Pre-sundering, like pre-sundering law. So there was basically, back in the day, um, Erois was split into uh, the, the, tenement, the tenements, I think I called them. Um, these were regions controlled by certain individuals favored by a specific god, who is basically like, you are in charge of this region now. And there was no borders because everybody was working together, but it was, they were like the governor of a particular region. And so those regions were allocated different things. So the region you guys know as Suvona, specifically Rooksfeld, was basically given control to a certain person who was, your, their job and the job of the region was make food for everybody else in Erois. Mm. That is your region's responsibility. Um, and it was Palador, the god Palador, who was in charge of this region, which is why there's such a strong Palador yeah, faith see. today. Okay. So these kind of things. So each region kind of has like connections to the different gods. Um, he gives you a list of places that you recognize as being within that region. Um, and this is something where I need to go into my full notes and give a bunch of this stuff to you, because okay. this is stuff you would know. Oh, I haven't done that yet. That's right. <laughs> um, but I think that there would be, I'm trying to think. He would, he would know of the original capital, which was just called uh, Starfall, mm -hmm. um, which was the original kind of main city um, that they belonged to. Uh, so that's, is that where, why it's called the Starfall? Like Starfall Park, right? better go, it was around that area, yeah, absolutely. Um, obviously he, know, he would know Vortensar, um, but he, he knew of it, but other ships were tasked with attacking Vortensar. His ship, Nightfrost says, the ship that I powered is a smaller vessel. It is a battleship, but not a, a, a large one. We were mainly tasked with taking down smaller fortifications, uh, farming installations, these sorts of places. Huh. Well, thank you for that night. Home front. I'm no, afraid that this cool. city of glass does not, uh, is not something I know of. I, I'm not going to find those notes. They're somewhere. But yes, Nightfrost, if <laughs> you could just notes. give me a visual description of Breeze, that'd be great. Yes, I will do that. Oh. Yeah, let's backtrack a little oh, bit. That oh, that was my a God. tangent. Jeez. Uh, okay. Holy crap. Whew. Well done, Rhiannon. <laughs> <laughs> You've done it. It's always the new players where it's just like, I've come up with an idea, and I'm like, Ugh. I mean, it makes sense. It like, does. It's a great question. It's a great question. And it is something where we need to, we need to talk, uh, yeah. me and Sentry, about what, Century remembers and wonder is. Because I think we can kind of hand wave a lot of stuff by saying, you don't remember, like you were shut down for a long time, parts of her memory may be missing and things yeah. like that. But there are she some things that you would absolutely know. We could just track her. <laughs> <laughs> she shut down. <laughs> so, what's the plan now? So you're gonna leave Night Frost here? Yes. Yeah. So, you, okay, so he, you feel the cloak melt away. I'm going to do this in a corner where no one yeah, else Yeah, you can find like a, because you're in the garden, so you can easily find a shadowed part of the gardens. Um, and he, his, his cloak melts down into the ground, into your shadow, detaches and becomes this kind of hunched shadow-like being. And he kind of drifts over to a tree and blends in with the shadows of the tree. Well. I have a concern. Mm. If Night Frost decides to get lonely and talk to people and they find him and pick him up and take him away, mm. you lost Night Frost. Uh, Lucis, uh, Lucis, that's me. Uh, <laughs> Night Frost. Sure, yes, Master. Only speak to me, thank you. Very well. Don't Until speak to anyone else. I Night Frost. I will not speak to anyone. Don't Night let Frost. anybody else pick you up. I am not responding to the elven woman. You're doing so great. Night Frost. Command. You're doing fantastic. Night Frost. Very good. 
Both of okay. us? In that I, will keep my, I will keep myself He's in. Gone. I do not wish to be misunderstood or mistaken for a creature of darkness. No, just be a tree of shadow. You Perfect. Looms in. Don't forget that you don't currently have the benefit, so untick uh, cloak form. Because mm. you do get like. Oh, yeah, uh, my spell, those programs. spells are gold, so it's fine. Well, it's also like the. Um, you do get a, a base AC and saving throw oh, bonus. Do I? Yeah, okay. so untick him. Well, in that case, that plan's sorted. I guess we now wait for Breeze. Shall we head off to Spell Clash? Wait! Wait. Night for us, you'd be so good in Spell Clash. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I can return to you, Master Lucius. If You're you need too to. useful. That's your problem. All right. That You're too is good. Kind of you to say. Mm. Well, I have to do it off my own back. What? We without, without Night Frost? Are you sure? Yes. I mean, you're a potent spellcaster. Look at you. Did you see me teleport? What? <laughs> In Hesper's uh, tower. God, that was good. I mean, I uh, missed it. I was too busy looking at the big flaming guy. You didn't guy. see it. Uh, it was so good. Either way, I should probably use my own. Bellas. Oh, well, Night Frost, are you able to make Lucius teleport? When he wears me the cloak You horns. failed. You were only meant to respond to Lucius. You're right. <laughs> oh! You're a failure in all things. Don't call him a failure. <laughs> Don't, he's going to go on such a <laughs> Why would you say that? Night Frost, you are I've so failed. worthy, you're great. I failed like I failed. You're not a failure. Okay, you're I take it back. Lovely. It was a test. Night Frost. It was a te- Night Frost. It was, that was a joke, Night Frost. <laughs> 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 he, just, he just goes quiet and doesn't say anything. Else. Oh, uh-huh. crap. The bird is teasing you, Night Frost. Don't listen to it. I'm just a bird. He's just a bird. <laughs> That's one tick towards insane. <laughs> <laughs> an insanity bar. <laughs> anyway, yeah, he just goes quiet. Oh, Night for Frost. God's sake. I'm sorry, Night Frost. Night Frost. Night Frost. Night Frost. You can't even see him. Night Frost. He's so not it, responding. He's, so it looks, he's not responding. It looks like when he's in he's his shadow there. form, if he can blend with the shadow of another object, it, it's almost indistinguishable. He, no. he can, as long as he doesn't move. No one's looking for it. As long as no one's looking for it and he doesn't move, he just looks like a shadow. It's not like he gets like a bonus to stealth checks. He has a special thing where he's just, he looks like a shadow. Okay. Yeah. But I know that Eterna like radiate magical energy, don't they? They do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can't hide it. it you like don't know pattern? a lot about them. Well, I mean, if I had like, like detect magic. Pattern. Again, you've never tried it, I don't think. You, you, you detected him in his bow form, but not when no, in his human shadowy form. Oh, oh, that's true. Because, like, yeah, that's what I mean. I feel like I've seen Tian Gong. He's but... hiding his power level. <laughs> wow. And what level is it? Re got it. <laughs> it's not 9,000. Oh. oh. Um, anyway, it's over. Dig on ball. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, spell clash. You're going to head to the spell clash, I guess we'll wait until that time. Okay. Yeah, we can we can bring it up. Like uh, if the other preliminary testers are there, maybe they'll move the uh, the match early. Um, spell Clash, the Spell Clash Arena is in North Street, so you make your way back towards there. Along the way, you do happen to spot because Rose Meadows shop is on the way to the Spell Clash Arena. Um, you see her outside. You see, and for Century and Ayla's benefit, you see a centaur, white-bodied horse centaur, with a human uh, girl half wearing a very loose. Very uh, flowy silk top with long blonde hair with flowers woven into it. And she's outside because her shop front has been vandalized. You can see all the flower pots that were underneath the windows have been smashed. Um, Several of the colored uh, windows have been smashed. There is crude like paints and writing that's been like written on the wall in paint um, and some other materials that don't look very pleasant. Um, and you can see she's got like a little hood up, like a big scarf that she's got over, and she's very delicately trying to, you know, clear things up. But she's kind of constantly looking around and, and making sure that, you know, no more trouble's gonna follow her. She, um, so you see that. Um, uh, and if you carry on, you just head I your mean, way to the spell clash. Carry on? <laughs> yeah, it's up to you. I, uh, I, I, I literally just think it's a centaur. Yeah. I, don't know I mean, it would be, you, seeing a centaur would be a kind of a big deal in civilization. Like, Kay. you've not. Seeing a centaur in civilization is like, what the fuck is this? Um, <laughs> but like that doesn't, you don't know her, so it would depend on if Ayla actually gives them. I which mean, I can't imagine Ayla would. Yeah, I maybe. I kind of do. It, we should stop. Well, that's she's it. She's so beautiful and sad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we, had, we spoke to her. We already. bought some potions from her before. Oh, have you? Then she'll know you. We should help. Rose. Meadow? Are you going to so you go over? Rose Meadow? you kind of have to walk <laughs> over to her. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of got like the horse thing where like she's down, like her front legs are kind of like half down because she's like clearing up a bunch of these broken flower pots yeah. and things. 
and she kind of looks up and you can see her eyes are quite red, um, her cheeks are a little bit puffy and she's like, oh, little birdie, yeah, it's uh, so nice to see you. You too, Rose Meadow, Ugh. what's happened here? Oh, last night some people must have uh, broken my store uh, while I was asleep. I heard that the, the temple of Hesper burned down and I think that they did it around that time. Um, do you... They broke the window and I woke up and I'm, I'm just trying to clear it up now. Wait, did they take anything? No, no, they didn't take anything. They were just, this has happened before. They've, not to this extent, but they've put like nasty messages to my door and things like that. Um, say... It's been getting really bad the last few weeks. You say they, do you know who it is? I think it's probably the same people from the Abbey. Right, and the messages on the door? Telling me to get out of town, that I don't belong here, that I'm a freak of magic and nature, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. I was kind of, I was gonna put it all behind me, but this is really bad. It's never been this bad before. Maybe I should just leave. And she no. just kind of looks. Uh, do, you, do you come up to her? Yeah, like, She's no. like, oh, hello there, guardian. I'm so sorry, my store's all a mess. But it's if you okay. need any potions or alchemical supplies, I can do it for you. Are you okay? I'm fine, I'm not hurt or anything. Oh good. Oh, we, this is, oh. they had to deal with this. I know, <laughs> I was there. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, um, well, those, those Palador priests are horrible. It's not all of them. That I've had a few of them who have come by and they've offered money and to help and things. I think it's, I think it's just some of them that are mean. Um, you can see that she's like trying to keep it together, but she's obviously very upset and she's trying to keep her self together as she's sweeping up into like a little pan, like all the broken. And it was these beautiful kind of ceramic hand painted pots in the flower bed and things like that. She's like kind of brushing them all up and she kind of stands up. And now she is way taller than Sentry. Like her, her horse body is about four feet and then she has like another three feet of human. So she's like seven feet tall. Is there a... Uh... Like, obvious broken window. Mm, yeah, yeah, both of them have got, like, it looks like rocks have been thrown through, so it's got that single, like, smash point. I'll cast Mending on that. Yeah, okay, yeah, it takes you a little bit of time, but, like, you have to gather the shards, hold them in place, and you can mend them. Um, but with, you know, other people, like, if Quill helps and stuff, it becomes a lot faster. Um, and she genuinely looks at you, she's like, Thank you so much, miss, that's so kind of you, thank you. I wish, um... Would you like a shampoo, a herbal shampoo? Oh, uh, what kind is it? Uh, I have some different ones. I have one made with some vanilla extract, mm. and then I have a lovely blackberry. It's very citrusy. Right, will it stain my hair though? No, 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 it's very clean. It mm. uh, doesn't stain, it's not a coloring. It's for cleaning purposes. Do you yeah, have I'm... any for coloring? Can we color your hair, Lucius? Yes, Hi. of course, Hi. I have Hi. many different Hi. colorings for hair. I have ones that can remove natural color. I have ones that can give you false colorings. You I've got all sorts. I'm, I have a lot of pastels. <gasps> it's not very in right now. I, I went through a phase, obviously, where I did color my hair. But then no matter what color your hair is, you'll always have colors to pull from, no matter what you wear. That's true. Oh, that you always have a, color. It's a beneficial tactic, I like that. But yeah. it wouldn't go. It wouldn't mm. go with this outfit. I don't understand what you mean. Your outfit is literally every color ever. It's, it's predominantly purple. But I just merely have gems electric. which are different okay. colors. We can make gem, it purple. As long as we it's make contained, it purple. No, absolutely not. Why? A lovely pastel lilac would look very fetching. I fixed your window. But anyway, I will give you... <laughs> she's like, let me get, just get you something. And she goes back in and she comes out with a little, little wicker hand basket and it's got hair lotions and soaps. She's like, this is for you. Very kind of you. Do you have the ingredients on the bottles? She like puts out, like she goes in and writes them down on a piece of parchment. I get a bit sneezy around certain things. She puts them in. Thank you. Very kind. Um, it's very kind of you to fix my window. Thank you. Have you ever needed to defend yourself? No, I think that, I think that these people, the ones that do this, they're cowardly. They wouldn't, they know that I'm kind of strong, so they probably wouldn't want to actually fight me. So they just do this hurts more. I kind of wish that they would just try and beat me up. Do you know of anyone else? In the... I beat them up for you. I didn't really see who it was. I just saw some people in cloaks. I heard the broken windows. I came running out. Um, had to put on, you know, clothes. And then I came out and I saw them running away. But And do you know of anyone else that has this kind of treatment in the town? 
Mm, she's like shakes her head. Most of the other merchants are humans or dwarves or half elves, which they all seem to be fine with. I'm the most strange shopkeeper, I guess. Mm -hmm. What about the guardians in the south? I've heard that they sometimes get trouble, yeah. But they're kind of outside the walls, aren't they? Also, I think a lot of people are scared of the big one. I've heard people say that there's a big guardian that protects them and people are scared of him. Yeah, he's really big. I am, he's huge. honestly. Yeah. He's very nice, very kind. He's a delight. I wish I had somebody like that to watch over my store. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you so much for fixing my windows, though. That's all right. Thank you for the uh, shampoo. That's, you're welcome. It's all natural. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. All right, thank you. Okay. Let's bye, keep going. bye, Birdie. Yeah. Goodbye, bye. Uh, Rose Meadow. Sorry, that is okay. <laughs> she really likes you. Yeah, she He's does. He's so soft. I am. Is he? Yeah. I can't say I've ever. See, it's nice and soft. Sure. We should put the oils in you, <gasps> in your feathers. Don't. And also, Can we dye his feathers? No, yes. no. Why I've never you? made a feather dye before. I'm going to work on one. Mm, yeah. well, I am doing spell clash, actually, so maybe. You have, have you got... You're going to do the spell clash? Yeah. I wish I could go and watch it, but I can't fit in the stadium. No. Really? I'm too big. The stadium's big. She, like, gestures to her horse body. Oh. You can't really Good sit point. down anywhere. <laughs> Uh, Surely they can find a space, though. I've asked, and they didn't let me in before. They said uh. that they didn't have that I would be a safety hazard if they had to get out of the stadium quickly. Right, that's true. Um, she well, looks, she looks very sad at that, like, mm, like self-conscious of. I'm we'll, see what we, we'll see what we can do. Thank you. Once we make a name for ourselves, right, Birdie? Yeah. Sure exactly. that you will. Thanks. Have you got temporary dye that we could put in their hair for spell clash? And then they Nothing want temporary, out? no. It's it's uh, it lasts for a few months. In that case, no. no. Thank you. Do not need that, do not dare touch me. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Yeah. Uh, can you make yeah. your way to the spell clash? Okay. So yeah. as you guys make your way to spell clash, we'll take a break. Yeah. Ooh. And then next time. We'll be back with some spell clash. Yes, after spells. all this time. Back the spell! Excited for that. Ooh. See you in five.
welcome back to High Rollers. Ooh. Hello. Uh, we were just talking about uh, voices for Solid Snake and Johnny Bravo. Mm. And Karan from Voltron. <laughs> uh, welcome back. So, party. You make your way through the streets of Cali's Rest and you come to the large plaza that a few of you have visited before, but a new site for Ayla and Sentry. A large open plaza, buildings all around the outside, at the center of which is a large stone dome. About the size of like the Globe Theatre kind of thing. About big enough for about three, four hundred people, two, three hundred people inside. The surface, the stone surface of the dome itself is inlaid with runic patterns that glow. And you see these pulses of magic explode all over the dome. Swirls of color, pulses of light, lines that sketch out in geographic, uh, geometric shapes. Around the stone building, there are several smaller, small stone buildings of which you can see a few gathered crowds, gathered guards, etc. Um, and there is a small entranceway, an archway that leads inside the dome itself, um, where you can begin to hear kind of like the murmurings of a growing crowd. Um, and you can see that there are indeed people lining up with tickets, uh, ready to participate in something upcoming. Mm -hmm. um, Lucius, Quill, you've been here before. Uh, you have a signed and paid for form. You still have to pay for your membership, your license fee. Oh, Nova gave me a big sack of gold. She, well, Arvel said that he would cover the entrance fees. So okay, this, so this one's free. You know, did he cover mine? Uh, no, he, I believe he reimbursed you. Oh, because oh. you paid for a hundred gold, and he said that he would um, reimburse it. Nice. Well, no, no. I think that you said that you were going to pay for it but that he would do other sponsorships and you would introduce him to Daddy and there would be some sort of deal there, so yeah. you don't get it back. Um, but it is all on your money. Yeah. Um, and you can see that as you begin approaching Quill, you probably notice this. There is a dwarven man who is talking to uh, two other robed figures, right. uh, you know, wearing sort of merchant's clothes. Is it racist to ask if it's Arvel? It's not Arvel. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, he appears to be, you saw him briefly, I think, before. Uh, you recognize him as being Torgan Emmerdown. He is the manager for Clash of the Champions, yeah. one of these recruitment companies. And he's watching you kind of like, what are these guys doing? Um, as you begin making your way over to the ticket entrance. I think as we're walking through, I'm like, now Sentry, I need to reaffirm this to you. There are shields, uh, we are totally protected, the arena is laced with magic, okay. there's very, very little chance I'll get hurt. Extremely small uh, chance. I mean, do you want to do like a, a signal or something in case you're in trouble? Like, like, what, like wave your arms or something? I or? mean, I don't mean to worry you more, but if I wave my arms and I'm in trouble, you won't be able to help anyway. <laughs> I'll be fine. There's a shield. There's so many precautions in place to stop injuries from happening. Plus, I think anytime we're in combat and I get injured, it's because they're cheating and using physical weapons. This is a spell clash tournament. Oh, they could cheat, couldn't they? Or maybe it's too real. Maybe, maybe it's still time to pull out, you know? Maybe freeze is a big deal. Do you get, do you, could you like, get money back from them because... If they cheat, that's they're disqualified. Fair. Lucius, are you worried? Well, it's just a really big dome, you know, and there's a lot of people watching. I mean... If they cheat, can I beat them up in the alley at the back? Absolutely. That's yeah. your prerogative. Yes, but okay. Lucius, you, 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 this was all your idea. Mm. You can't... Yeah, it seemed good on paper. It seems great on I paper. I think you're just nervous. Is it the flashy lights? Is that making you nervous? Yes, it's all very... Very big, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, do the preliminaries take it's place? Quite, it's a lot, visually. Preliminaries take lot, place yeah. in the dome, yeah. With the audience as well. Yeah, well, some, like, some people come along to watch them because it's the chance to see upcoming, you know, oh, I see. upcoming so this is why duelists kind well. of thing. Yeah. Um, listen, we've seen you fight in, in hundreds of combats against ghosts, against undead, against cows. You're going to be fine. <laughs> Yeah, You'll be totally fine. You're right. So as you begin right. making your way over from this conversation, Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> you can see... You're light. right. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna give him a Bardic Inspiration die? Sure. Yeah, sure, give him a d6. As long as it lasts? Um, 10 minutes, I think. <laughs> Let's go now! <laughs> really quickly. You see at the ticket booth, uh, you see Arvel and Valor buying oh. tickets. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you look over and Valor's like, hey, hey! And she like waves over and Arvel's like, 
Hey, thought we'd come, uh, was wondering when you'd show up. We uh, weren't sure exactly when your match was, so we thought we'd just come along and watch for the day. Well, to be fair, we don't know when our match is ourselves. Um, you're not going to watch, are you? Of course we are. We can watch Birdie, don't watch me. We of course we're going to watch you. Yeah, of course we're going to watch you, Lucius. Oh, but uh, it's embarrassing. You're going to be fine. Did you finalize your names? Your, your oh, fancy that's a names. good point. Yeah. Uh, 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 what was it, Valor? Pr prince, painted Prince. The painted, painted Prince, or like... Prince of Aim... I don't know, yeah, something <laughs> like that. I can't really remember. Uh, Still not feeling great. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a shame that. She like, looks really guilty. <laughs> oh, I look so for a second. Well anyway, yeah, we got seats. Uh, what should I get for you and Century? Sure, y yeah. I mean, we would've Let's watched. get them all together, let's sit together. I'll need sure. someone's hand to hold. Val is like, you can hold my hand, Sentry. Okay. I mean... It's going to be fine. I watched it before. It's it's perfectly safe. Okay. I mean, this is no insult to you, Vali. You have quite small hands in comparison to Sentry. Are you sure you want to hold Vala's Just, hand? I'll, I'll hold her in between my finger and thumb. What are okay. you saying? It's well, fine. I know how Sentry wouldn't hurt my she hand. gets. I wouldn't hurt her. Exactly. Okay. I'm just thinking maybe Ayla's hand is more appropriate to hold. Ayla's hand is not available for holding, thank Break you very much. <laughs> what if I want to hold your hand, Ayla? Ayla's hand is not available for holding, thank you very much. She looks, Vala looks sad, like, okay. I'll pat her on the head. <laughs> I was um, like, and none of, I'm guessing none of you want to hold my hand. Hold, hold your hand! <laughs> Here you go! You regret Anyway, I'm going to go buy tickets. Uh, good well, luck. Oh, say? Alvo, um, ha, uh, is, is mine... Covered? My, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'll do you proud. So that name, Quill. Oh yeah, did you write a name on the... Bird Brain. Nope. Okay. Bird Brain. I'm just gonna give you the money. Oh. You deal with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's run. All right. All right, well... <laughs> what? You two come with us. Leave these two to get signed up. Bird Brain. I'm not Bird, bird brain. brain, no. Bird Brain. No, we're go we gotta go. Oh, we're so busy now. Can, dead eye. Oh, can I hug? <laughs> dead eye. I'll be fine, Sentry. Oh, oh, crush it. Oh, trio oh. hug. Oh. <laughs> oh. Lucius comes in. Valor joins in. Like, yay! <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. It's hurting quite a lot. Arvel just stands with Ayla. I ain't doing that. I don't do that either. Nope. Sentry. Be careful, please. Be careful, please. Please, 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 please. No, the intention is to hurt. No, no it's not joking. <laughs> I'll, I'll, give, I'll give both of them a good luck punch on the arm. Ow, ow. They really didn't want. So I'm being crushed by Sentry, punched by Ayla. You're one good Ayla. One wing left. That's my spell arm. <laughs> All right, let's go. I roll on the those check. of you who are watching. <laughs> uh, Lucius and Quill, you make your way up to, and you can see that there. You can see what was her name. Um, Oh, it was... Um, Daphne. Yeah. Oh, yeah Daphne, Daphne is there. Um, you can see her talking to a bunch of other uh, duelists. There are three of them stood next to her. One appears to be a human man, short beard, kind of like a little goatee, very close cropped hair, uh, piercing blue eyes. Um, he's talking to her. There is also a dwarven woman, looks very primal. She's got like hide armor, long dreadlocked hair, um, oh. kind of leaves and vines sewn in between it. And you can see her braces are made of teeth and bones. Um, and then next to them is just a little, little chubby halfling bloke. <laughs> and he's got, like, little, he's got little like three quarter lengths on. He's got like a little shirt and a little vest, hands in his pockets. He's just like, doo, 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 doo. he's the threat. I mean, I think, Immediately. to be fair, I think they've probably got the same perception to us. Like, so you Lucius guys walk over, in. they look over, see you guys. Lucius has got like arcane uh, focus on stones. his arms, covered in gemstones, and I walk in, I've got a, like a blindfold, <laughs> one arm, I'm like. <laughs> you've seen some shit, you've yeah. been through some shit. I think I've got a massive scar across my face. Daphne well. looks up like, Oh, oh, yes, yes, you were here yesterday, weren't you? Did you get your licenses signed? Uh, oh, um... I paid for mine already. You've, you've paid for them, but you remember you needed to get them signed by an approved... Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, we, we did, met yes. with, um... We met with, uh... We went with the... With, with Gideon. The, Gideon. Uh, the Gideon Golden Touch. Uh, when you say that <laughs> name, the human man with the beard kind of like... <clears throat> wow, really? Well, he was entirely gold. He was entirely gold. Yeah. More like tarnished, I guess. I mean, these days. Yeah. Well, I guess it's up to you. I'm terrified. Then that's terrified here. Terrified? Yes. <laughs> no. No. Nope. Chauncey, the the little half is like. I'll tell you what. I'm I'm a bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> Never done this before. <laughs> I mean, it's exciting, though, isn't it? <laughs> I'm cheering him on. He sounds yeah. great. Do you um? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um. Are, are you doing? <laughs> are you joining the preliminaries? Yeah. I am. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> what do you what do you think? What sort of spells do you have? What sort of Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, I do a little bit of ice magic, me. No. Nice. I, I probably shouldn't tell you, should I? You might be fighting. That's silly. Well, you've well, just given me Well, I guess, can I tell you? What do you do? Well, you've just given me the hint. Oh. To give away too much information. Oh, that's, uh, I should know better, shouldn't I? <laughs> you can see the human man just rolls his eyes. The dwarven woman looks over and is just like, just like, you really are a dumb piece of shit. <laughs> He's like, there's what? no need for that, love. All right, <laughs> calm down. She's just like, Y'all are jokers. And she just like turns around. She's like, Daphne, you got my forms right. She's like, yes, yes, yes. You're very good, Thorn Whisper. Go on, off you go backstage. Um, She's uh, like, heads off. Who are you all signed with, by the way? Uh, the human man is just like, signed up with Clash of the Champions, of course. Okay. Best company across all of Savona. Oh, sure. You don't want anything out of this then, no. I'm going to get plenty when I'm a famous duelist. When? If. When. God, you can really give it back. <laughs> like, looks over, he's just like, I see how well uh, you do. Uh, you know, with your handicaps and everything. Ooh. Yes, well, they do affect me quite substantially. Little half is like, here, you're a brave one, aren't you going in there? I'll tell you what, that's really admirable, that is. Listen, I've been through a lot of stuff. I'm just here <laughs> for the experience. Oh, what to be a... honest. Well, I, I hope you have a good match, mate. I hope that we get to have a, a bit of a fight. You too. Thanks, man. Here, lovely. I like this guy. Chauncey, Chauncey Bree Willow. <laughs> Chauncey. Holds his hand out. Oh, well, Quilla Cad Kala. My nice friends to call meet. me Quill. You can call me Quill. Well, that's lovely. Thank you very much, Quill. And who's this fancy fella? Look at you. Hello, Hello mate. Uh, hello. Hello, it's great to meet you. What kind of magic do you do? Oh, I do all, uh, not very much. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing the you know, mind I'm so games. To, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've learned a lot already. My palms are sweating. I need to change my gloves, actually. <laughs> Uh, do you have a, um, you know, a stage name? Me? Yeah. Chauncey. Chauncey. <laughs> Chauncey <laughs> Brewell. Straight with the first name. If you had a stage name for me, I know we've only just met, but what would you... Stage name? Well, you know, like, uh, there was uh, Rafe, there was Persephone, there was... Who were they? <laughs> the spell Clash, they, they played yesterday. Oh, were they another more mages, are they? Yeah, yeah. They're nice. Yeah, they, <laughs> and they, they had, they had uh, personas. They came in, uh, one was dressed What's entirely that? in... But, uh, don't worry. I'm not from around here. I don't know. Is that a Savonan <laughs> word? Where are you from? Me? Yeah. I'm up from. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm from Elsereth. Elsereth? Elsereth. Elsereth. It's a northern continent. Continent. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? I'm not, not making fun. <laughs> I was just Tom saying that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, anyway. I wish you luck in the yeah. tournament. Don't beat me. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, no, if we fight, best man wins, eh? Or best bird man. Best bird or man. Well, Half man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I look forward to seeing it. Nice. All right. Good well, then. Well, goodbye. Nice to meet you, mister. The Sweaty YouTube. hands. Yeah, well, <laughs> he gets off. And he goes to walk, and she's like, no, 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 try and seat that way. He's like, oh, this way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> One plots off. I bet he's fucking powerful as shit. He's going to be, yeah, be he's gonna gonna really incredible. <laughs> the human man just is like, well, introductions are done. Well, I guess if we're doing introductions, uh, Rick to Glendale. Rick to Glendale? Mm -hmm. Is that Rick D. Yeah. Glendale? You should probably know me as uh, Rick to the Evocator. The Rick, what? Rick. Richter the Evocator. Oh, Richter. R Richter. Richter. Rick. Yes. And your name, sir? Uh, Lucius. Did you say Rick? Furian Elowin Elonasto. Elonasto. <laughs> Why do we know the name? Oh, you may have heard of it before. Elonasto. From the Sky Cities, I'm assuming. Sky Cities, yes. You sc <laughs> Nail on the head. Yes, I've heard about you. Involved in the Ethereum trade. Yes. Family, yes, yes. I've heard the name. Had a firm foot in it for many a century. Oh, very good. Well, it's nice to meet another civilized person at this sort of thing. How dare you? What do you mean? Yeah, but there's very civilized people among us. Yeah. He looks over like, where? <laughs> he like, uh, oh, I see your friend. Yes, of yes. course. Yes. Extremely civilized. Bertie. Hmm. <laughs> well, good luck. Can I ask good what luck, you sort of spells you? <laughs> you said evocator. I you imagine evocations. <laughs> Certainly can. Oh. And then he just begins to make his way up. My name's Keelek Flame Man. He's left. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now he thinks I'm going to cast Flame Spell. <laughs> well, <laughs> very clever. Tricks him! Daphne looks over. Well, uh, last thing, just I need names if you wish to go by 
you can go by your real names, or you can come up with some sort of ridiculous name like many of the others. Okay. I mean, uh, Dead Eye. I, I mean, no one else is doing names. Are they not? It will feel really dumb if they do. That would, wouldn't it? You could still do Painted the Prince. The Painted Man. Prince. Prince. The Painted Prince. Prince. Painted Prince. Painted Prince. All right. Dead Eye. I don't have nobility though. Oh, that's a lie. <laughs> We've got away, haven't we? We're not there anymore. You're currently in the stand Damn waiting. Uh, yeah. You hear across the stadium, Big Brain! <laughs> <laughs> was um, the, the, um, the, the... You just hear an echo. Big <laughs> Brain, Big Brain. The one with the fur armor and the bones and the aggressive look on her face, was who, what, did she have a name? Yes, Thorn Whisper. Thorn Whisper? Mm -hmm. In that case... She's uh, druidically trained. Uh, I, mm. uh, I'll, go, I'll go with... Um, uh, Quill. Quill. Really? <laughs> After Quill all this? Is. I can't think of all anything, right. I'm panicked. So, this will be your Hello. first time. I've already given the speech to the others, so we'll run through things. Are we okay. late? I'm taking, you, I'm taking you backstage. No, 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 it won't begin until you're ready. Okay, good. So, first things first, um, we'll determine randomly who will be paired against. Uh, the other three that you met are also trialists, they're preliminaries. <clears throat> Before the match begins, each of you will receive the spell class shield. Uh, this will absorb a certain amount of damage, um, which you can replenish using your own arcane energies. Okay. I should note. Go on. Ask well, a question. I think like, uh, like Birdie, he can heal. Is it that kind of energies, or do I put like a, a spell into it? Channel a spell into the shield itself. You'll have a feeling for it once it's cast upon you. Um, but the tier of magic that you would normally, that, that percentage of energy that you would normally accompany to a spell, you can channel that into it. We put a spell slot into it. A spell slot. Okay. <laughs> uh, that will replenish some energy of the shield. Healing yourself shouldn't be necessary. Um, there are a couple of things that you should note. Um, causing any harm to a person once the spell class shield has been broken will result in a disqualification and your opponent will win. Has that ever happened? It can happen. Sometimes, sometimes mages will summon a creature. Um, it will lose control, and once the spell class shield goes down, the summoned creature may continue attacking. Um, um, can I ask, do you have any m magic missile uh, potentials? Because the I fire <clears throat> hundreds at a time. Yes. <laughs> uh, three. But like, if, if, if one hits and that breaks the shield and then the other two hit? I believe that you're still in control of the missiles. You could simply choose them to have strike the ground or something. I have that level of control, yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> I would certainly hope so. Well, I've never seen you... It should also be noted that um, enchantment magic. There is... Um, there is no official forfeit during a spell class match. So if you were thinking of mind controlling an opponent into quitting the match, that simply won't work. Uh, it will be up to the referees to determine if a person is no longer capable of fighting. Right. The ward will remain in place for the duration of the battle. Um, spells that require a physical attack. There are some spells which allow you to make a sword strike as part of it. These will register against the shield. But however, normal fighting techniques will be result in a disqualification as well. Um, everything must be part of a spell or some sort of spell-like ability. That so, you have. so if I was to channel energies into an implement and hit the shield with it, that's fine? Yes. For example, there is a spell that I know is called um, Green Flame Blade. That would be perfectly usable, but if you were to simply start hitting your opponent with a big hammer, that's a big no-no. Do you have Damn a glass of, of water? <laughs> you will have time for refreshments just before your match. Right. Um, also, a little bit of piece of advice. Don't forget that Spell Clash is very much about the crowd. Getting them on your side, having them invigorate you can be beneficial. But it shouldn't be done as... Uh, don't think that it'll see you through a match merely by itself. The crowd's very important, but it will only take you so far. Um, if there's anything else you need to know, you may of course a uh, ask. Let's, uh, right, and she leads you into a large kind of waiting area where there are two wizened looking older mages, probably in their 50s or 60s, um, and they are in deep meditation. The other three hopefuls are sat down, um, and you can see that there's a short corridor that leads out onto the stage itself. Um, uh, Daphne goes over to what appears to be like a big kind of round clouded sphere. I mean, she drops in parchments with your names written on them, and then she's going to randomly draw opponents. I really want I'm going to get Thorn, thorn Whisper, like... aren't I? Yes. So for Quill... <clears throat> so for Quill, uh, she draws in... Quill will face Richter the Evocator. Oh, oh no, why oh, you uh, down? Kick his ass. I mean, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> chancy, chancy, chancy. So in fact, I'll do a D4 then, so one, two. 
And Lucius, uh, sorry, the Painted Prince will face Chauncey Bree Willow. Yes! Hey! <laughs> I rolled it, man. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> so. so he seemed very powerful. Um, so Thorn Whisper, she, she, she says like, one. Thorn Whisper will face off against one of the uh, current uh, things in a trial match. So it's oh, like a buy through. She basically gets like a, she'll play against one of the um, official. Oh wow, she's like wrecked. Um, well, not necessarily. There will be handicaps. There will be certain yeah. handicaps put in place. She's wrecked. She has to do it with one hand tied behind <coughs> her back. So that's my, what I could say. I guess I could do this with one hand okay. tied behind my back. So you have time. I can't believe you called yourself Quill. You have some time just before your match. If there is anything you would like to do, um, you are now that you are backstage. You are permitted to cast any spells on yourself um, prior to the match. Um, but there will not be enough time for a short rest. So any spell slots you spend now, they're going to be basically be spent. You can see um, Richter, uh, uh, Thorn Whisper, um, all begin applying spells to themselves. Um, uh, What's you can everyone see, casting on themselves? Uh, you can make an Arcana check. No, I'm asking. Oh, you're asking? Like, they, they just coolly do not engage. They're like, I'm preparing and then they go back to their doing. Uh, you see Richter kind of covers himself in like a shimmering purple aura. Um, you watch as the Thorn Whisper woman, her skin begins growing bark-like protrusions all over it. She's like... <laughs> I miss being a druid. Quill, they're all doing things. I don't... I don't. shouldn't really be do I need to lie down. I, I don't know what they could... It's too hard to beating through your chest. A little bit. Now I know they're casting stuff. Five I minutes, Quill versus... We don't have the enough evocator. time. But I, um, how's my hair? Stands. Uh, Arvel, Valor, Ayla, <laughs> and Sentry, you're all set down. The You sat there for a while while they're kind of getting their preparations. Arvel buys some fried potato slices yes. for everybody, uh, salted. Um, there are also drinks, there's tankards of beer for Excellent. Ayla uh, and Arvel, and then he gets water or like a, a juice for Valor and probably for Sentry. Um, and you guys take your seats. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you want, you want, he'll oh, yeah. be you what you want. So if you want to be, oh. you want to be. Arvel just makes yeah. this. Drug sentry is fun. <laughs> you guys uh, get your seats, and after a little bit of time, music begins to pump through the dome. It's kind of pounding like. Spotlight on this big <laughs> open nervous? 90 foot square field uh, filled with rocks and trees and rivers okay. as <laughs> this purple shielded haze erupts around it like a big cube. <laughs> The lights above begin to twinkle. Valor begins like bouncing in the seat, like, <laughs> yeah! Woo! I'll give Sentry a single pinky to hold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, two strong, the two strong women gripping pinkies against each other. It's like one arm, um, right? This is all you get. As the music begins to, to swell, the lights blare down onto it, and you see a very well-dressed man with slicked back, black and white hair, wearing a, a very pristine looking merchant's uniform appears. He brings up a small cylindrical device to his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's preliminary matches for our newest Bow Clash Duelists. We've got three matches coming up this afternoon with three hopefuls ready to enter the Savonan tournament. Let's give it up for our first match. At this point, Quill, is there anything that you have cast on yourself in the interim? Everything lasts like okay. a minute. Like okay. <laughs> in that case, you are just led through the tunnel. <laughs> you take your place. You don't get the super cool entran entrances just yet. You're just preliminaries. So you are brought out at the same time as Richter. As you hear, our first match will be between Richter the Vocator, and you, the crowd, like a few people, like smatterings of claps and things, versus Quill! He didn't uh, name himself! <laughs> what the heck, Bernie? And then there's You're just done. a few confused, like... <laughs> is, is Richter doing anything when he walks out? He's just very calmly just looking. He's, he looks very imperious, just like, I am fucking great. Okay, I'm walking he looks like... like asshole, Sentry. I'm he walking does. like behind him, like limping a little bit. Yeah. And I like, my eyes are super wide. I look up to the crowd and I'm just like, I hope to give you a good game. Yeah, <laughs> you find that your voice it's is terrible. projected, so the thaumaturgy cantrip boosts your voice around the room. Okay, um, make a perform check. I'm for like me. trying to <laughs> look m like not miserable, but this is a and... this is a deceptional performance check for sure. Yeah, I mean, what? 19 plus. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. 21 with deception. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
You get a d6, Ooh. which you will keep until you spend it, or Richter does something to gain the crowd's favor in exchange. Oh, I see. So oh, that's It's cool. like a little bonus d6. You can add that to attack rolls or saving throws. Okay. Um, so, you are taken into position. You are positioned approximately 60 feet away from each other, uh, taking on st either stands of this arena. Um, let the first preliminary match of today begin! Roll initiative. Uh. <laughs> Natural 20. Natural 20! <laughs> oh shit. Good <laughs> start. So, Rick series up. That's a natural, so total. Rihanna, you're so uh, stressed 22. out. 22. <laughs> Quill, you're the first to react. As soon as it goes, you can see Richter beginning to channel up some sort of energy in his hands. You're not quite sure what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna. Is there still a formaturgy on my voice? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna like look at him and say, like, so do I go first or do you go first? But I'm ready in action. <laughs> okay. If he casts anything at me, I'm gonna like high level guiding bolt his ass. <laughs> okay, so you, you begin calling out to him. And he just, and the, there's kind of like a half laugh amongst the crowd, like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Um, and you just hear Richter like, now's not the time for uh, uh, apprentices, my dear bird. And he plunges his hand into the ground, and an oh, enormous shit. earthen <laughs> fist erupts <laughs> to try and grab you. Um, oh so you had a readied action, so go ahead with your spell. Okay, I launch a level two guiding bolt at So yeah, him. make the attack roll and everything that you need to for me, please. <laughs> uh, uh, <gasps> oh, oh no. but you can add your thing though. Can I add this now? Or is you it can a... add the, yeah, once you've spent it though, it's gone, so. <laughs> uh, 10. <laughs> okay, so 10. So he comes running at you, and you're like, do you go for, and then you wham, you throw the guiding bolt out, this kind of like spray of feathery light yeah. <laughs> flies at him. But as he's running, Naruto running, of course, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> he dives to the side as the bolts fly past his head. One of them almost catches him, but this purple sheen around his form, <laughs> like oh. some sort of mage armor, Wraps. Uh, bounces off him. And then he plunges his hand into the ground. I need you to give me a strength saving throw. Oh good, that's a good one. <laughs> Have you ever looked at Quill and thought, wow, he's strong. Seven. Seven. <laughs> So this giant earthen <laughs> fist this so much. <laughs> erupts out of the ground, grips around you, it hits the shield, but the shield is closing on you and it begins crushing away and you can hear the shield beginning to uh, crack. By the way, you have 50 points on your spell class shield. Um, I also forgot to give you the rules. So as a bonus action, you can expend a spell slot to restore HP to the spell shield equal to two times the level okay. once it's broken it ends. But you can track your damage on that and then pass it over to Tra. All right, so how much damage have I just taken? So it's only five bludgeoning damage, but you are now restrained. Uh, yeah. I'm restrained? Mm -hmm. Cool! To break out, you'll need to make a strength check to break out of the restraint, as this thing is like pushing down on you. Right. Uh, whilst you are restrained, you also have disadvantage on any attack rolls that you make. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so that was his go. He's moved forward 30 feet, so he's about 30 feet away from you, and you can see him concentrating. He's like holding his hand into the ground as this thing He's just like, what's the matter, bird? Feeling a squeeze? Uh, uh, you'll go. <laughs> what's the matter, Richter? You feeling the same? Whole person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> wisdom, <laughs> wisdom saving throw? Uh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is uh, that is a did, did it, six. He's so held watch, for a minute. <laughs> so he's held, but I believe he can maintain <laughs> concentration. Mm. Um, so he's paralyzed. Or par yeah, paralyzed. Uh, he can continue making wisdom saves. Can't take actions or reactions. Okay. Um, so as an action, he can crush the hand. So the, the, the hand is still there, but it's no longer exerting the force as he just, his whole body seizes up. And he's like, <laughs> um, So that was your action. Would you like to try and break free? Uh, yes, okay. I would. Um, break free. It, says, it does say he can't move or speak. Yes. So, so but he's to... already cast the spell, so now it's just in his mind he's concentrating on it. Okay. But he has to use an action to use it to do more damage to yeah. you. Because this spell is like you can continuously do damage as long as you're held by it. Right. Uh, although hold, hold person is an action to do. Yes, but you can still try and escape as a... Yeah, I think it's just as a move action you can do it. Um, yeah. Seven, uh, what is it, sorry? Deck strength, deck strength, deck strength, strength. Eight. Eight, you just, you're pressing against this magical hand, which is no longer crushing you, but still gripping you. And you're like, eh, eh, and it just won't break, but you can see he's there. Um, at the end of, at the so start of his turn, by the way. Oh, no, end of his turn. <laughs> we're just saying, what's happening? End of, end of his turn, he's just still in place. Um, he's still frozen. He's still frozen, so he can't take any action, so it goes over to you. I'm gonna 
Um, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, I didn't. I took away bless. Damn it. Okay, I'll just try again to get out. Natural 20. Ah! Natural 20. So you kind of push your way out and you manage to squeeze open this kind of earth hand, pull your form through it, wiggle your way out and jump out of this hand, yeah. uh, escaping from the restrained condition. Uh, and he's now frozen. He is currently frozen, yes. In so that you have case, advantage against him. I will cast Spiritual Weapon. Okay, which, bonus action, Spiritual which, Weapon. Um, will have a bonus against him as well. He'll have yeah, advantage, has advantage against him. Yep. Uh, and I will attack with that. Okay, what does it look like? Uh, uh, I mean, I'm Aeolus panicking, hammer. so it's like... Aeolus Hammer. Yeah, I think of like, really cool weapon. Yeah. It's Aeolus Hammer. Yes! <laughs> I'm like this giant out. hammer appears out of energy, and, and that kind of causes the crowd like... Oh, Ooh! Oh, oh, oh. That's 20. That's 20! That's, that's a crit. So yeah. it's already a quick crit against it's him It's so anyway. wacky! Well, no, he's, he's, oh, yes, actually, because he's paralyzed. So paralyzed. Um, yep, so critical hit. <laughs> oh, if I'm within five feet of him. Well, the, the spiritual, spiritual weapon, weapon is, is within five feet of him, so I would say this still counts. Um, so I give him a whack in, the only way I know how, and that's so double with the dice. Ayla's hammer. Ayla's very happy. 12 plus 3, 15 damage. 15 points of damage to his Ooh. shield. Nice. So you watch as this Good hammer package. slams into this frozen form, and you watch as it impacts against this blue outline around him, and you see cracks like <laughs> begin to form. I like smell um, clash that drink. I like smell clash! <laughs> At the end of his turn, that is a 13. He's, he's it's doing 13. it, he's 13. Doing so it. he's like, finally, he's like, uh, he's just like, uh, what a dull move! Uh, as he now like brings himself back in uh, to a defensive position. That's technically at the end of his go, I believe. Um, so, what'd you do, Quill? Uh, I am going to uh, cast Shield of Faith on myself. Yep. Um, now is that concentration? Because spiritual weapon goes. I don't cast spiritual weapon on my uh, on shield of faith on myself. Oh no, wait! Spiritual weapon isn't a okay. concentration. Okay. Cool. Sure. So I shield of faith myself. Okay. Plus two AC, uh, and then keep whacking. Yeah. We'll with another whack. Whack. Wait, is it a bonus action to do spiritual weapon? If it's a bonus action to do attack it with a second turn, then you can't cast spiritual uh, shield of faith as well. You don't get two bonus actions per turn. Oh, I see. As a bonus action, action, I can move and attack with it. Yes, so you, you can't cut Shield of Faith and Spiritual Weapon. Okay, in that case, I'll Shield of Faith. But you could Guardian, then... you could Guiding Bolt. Uh, the Spiritual Weapon stays. No, if it, I'll, I'll do a Sacred Flame instead, because that's okay. a bonus action, Shield of Faith, action, Sacred Flame. Yeah, because it's a cantrip. Okay, uh, what's the is deck saving throw? Yep, 13. Uh, so that is 13. Damn. So now that he's free, he leaps to the side as this flame launches past him. And now free, he still technically has, oh, I didn't make a concentration saving through for his Maximilian's Grasp, which he failed, so the Maximilian's Grasp is gone. Maximilian's Grasp, Maximilian's never grasp. heard of that. Uh, he will turn around and he's just like, <clears throat> he like looks, he leaps to the side and then he brings his hands up and lightning <clears throat> begins crackling down and he's just like, <clears throat> evocation bolt, <clears throat> and like launches like it down towards move. you. Uh, let's Ugh. do a quick, I, gotta, I wish I'd got my spell card to get them. It does. Oh yeah, I'm like freaking out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if you were around when Ayla had her fight against the guy, I you'd have been just around. be on yeah. the floor. I'd run okay, away. range spell attack against the target. So. Ooh. Oh, seven? No, no way. Yeah. So the shield of faith, like this barrier kind of poosh, as this bolt slams into it blasting off to the side. I feel like Quill is in the thing, like I'm sat here now, scrolling through spell list. <clears throat> like. <laughs> um, um, but as he kind of like, as it blasts off, uh, he kind of turns and he's just like, kind of makes a grand stand. He's just like, hmm, perhaps you're a bit more, perhaps you're more of a bird of prey than a pigeon than I first thought. And he kind of like tries to kind of get a laugh out of the audience, but it doesn't quite hit. That sounds um, like a compliment. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't quite. Well, it was <laughs> kind of like make it like compliment, but trying to you know make it sound like you know bad. Uh, uh, but anyway, you'll go. Uh, I will do a. I'm burning through spell slots, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna. That's kind of the whole point of this whole whole thing. Right now, I'm gonna guiding bolt him. Okay. Uh, level one. Um, so spell attack. Fifteen plus five. That's a hit. Uh, and that's uh, Guiding Bolt, 4d6. 
You're casting it at second level, yeah? First level. First level. Uh, not great. Nine, 11, uh, 12 damage, but I have advantage on him from now on. Okay, so for the next turn anyway. Okay. So these uh, yeah. bolts of energy <laughs> slam into the shield. You begin to see it cracking and breaking. Uh, the crowd roars as these spells impact against his shield and the lights begin to kind of like spin around. The music swells <laughs> as it slams against him. Um, anything else you can do on your turn? Um, I might actually be good at this. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. You can bonus action with a spiritual <laughs> weapon because you're not casting a spell. You're just using a spell you already got in place. Uh... Yeah, that too. Whack it. <laughs> I probably should have done that. It's uh, a bonus action, so you can do both in the turn. You can Guiding Bolt and Spiritual Weapon. Natural 20. Oh, it was! Holy it was shit! Ten, I saw it. Three. So, uh, crit. Yeah, so, so... Double the dice. Six, 12, 15 again. <gasps> hell. What on That's earth? 30. Just Spiritual this Weapon. This is amazing. So you watch as he kind of like, he staggers back from these bolts like, what? He looks like, what the hell is happening as this giant hammer swings in, poof, kind of almost knocks into the ground. He skids back ksh, along the sand, dust kicking up along the grass as the crack in this shield is now quite wide and formed. I am no Arakokra. I am a priest of Hesper. He like looks confused for a second. The, the bird god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, I paid a fortune to be here! Ah, and he's going to launch another one of these uh, blasts of lightning towards you. character. <laughs> Ooh, that is 23. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so this is going to be... 2d12. What is that he's doing? The lightning one again. This is, this is, a, this is a witch bolt. So that is going to be 11 points of lightning damage. Um, and you watch as the, the lightning kind of circles you like a tether, and he's now holding on to one end as it's kind of still... You can feel the jostling of the energy wrapping around you. So he's actively pulling me towards him? Not pulling you towards him, but it's like this 30-foot tether between you of, like, lightning. Um, okay. Uh, give me a concentration saving throw, so constitution saving throw. Uh, constitution? Mm-hmm. Uh, 14. 14, and you took how much damage? 11? Yes. So yeah, so you're fine. Passes. You pass a concentration check. Okay. Your turn. Now this is going to sound wild. <laughs> okay. Come Hazel. Go on. So what I would like to do is I would like to hit with a spiritual weapon. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll do that anyway. I'm going to hit okay. with a spiritual weapon. Um, 16 plus 5. Yeah, 21. Hits, yeah, yeah. So 1d8. 8 plus 3. That's 11 damage. <laughs> So you watch as like he's holding this tether and you can see him like raising his hand up as if he's about to try and replenish the shield and you just one hand it slams into him like knocking him to the ground as this of blue oh. energy collapses around him. Oh, I a really cool move on yeah. there. Oh. The dust out as you hear this crowd like yeah. And then I, I start, by the way, I start spinning because I don't think the shield's down. Okay. I'm like, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> the announcer, it kind of lets it settle, and then as soon as you don't take the next immediate action, the announcer is just like, Victory Quill! Yeah! <laughs> Was that Quill? I did it, Lucius! You next! Oh, I did <laughs> I passed out. Okay. So the next match uh, will be between the Druid and the other character. I'm just going to roll some dice to see how well it goes. Um, the match is brief but quite intense. Um, she seems to be put up against a kind of plain looking wizardy kind of fellow, human, longish hair, red robes, who uses lots of fire magic. Um, and the, but the, the dwarven woman, this thorn whisper, she doesn't really take other animal forms, but she's constantly using like vine whips to pull herself around the arena. She like summons like these flaming bear hands that she targets into the shield. Um, and she's very, very athletic very, very quick, and her own physicality seems to lend itself really well to getting in close, which doesn't seem to be this wizard's forte. He's trying to keep her at range. She gets in close and then just pounds away at his shield, and eventually she wins uh, and takes the victory as well. Um, the one whisper. Anything in your, whilst this is going on? I want fainted, so okay. hopefully <laughs> someone's woken me up. Okay. Uh, yeah, they would come round and they'd be like, are you all right? Uh, uh, oh, I'm still here. So I guess I'm back. Quill goes backstage, yeah, you go back during that second match. So you're probably the one that actually wakes Lucius <gasps> up. Lucius, I won. Yeah. Well, if I can win, you'll definitely win. I'm up against Chauncey, I have no chance. Chauncey. <laughs> Chauncey. <laughs> I mean, Chauncey. 
Come on. I'm really excited to I see him. It's all a facade, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of spellcasters they have in Aylesbury. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no one knows. I mean, someone does. He's a mystery. I don't think he's... I'm out. I can't do he's it. Lucius, uh, Painted Prince, and Chauncey Bree Willow, you're up in three minutes. Oh, Quill, do you want to go ahead and wear my coat? You just did really well. <laughs> no, look, it's fine. You've got this. It's easily, you've got this. If, 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 if I'm the worst spellcaster in the team, and I just beat the evocator... Sorry, where did you get that information from? What? The worst spellcaster in the team. Well, easily. I mean, I've seen the kind of things you can cast, all different kinds Don't of Don't put yourself down, Bertie. You're fantastic. Well, Don't forget I, that. I mean, I keep... Anyway, I've got spell clash. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is bardic inspiration. Oh, <laughs> For 10 minutes. So you get a d6. Nice. So an extra d6. Okay. For 10 minutes. All right. Are you ready? One of the wizards comes up to you. It's like... Who, me? Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Stand there for a second. And he begins casting a ritual. Um, and you begin to feel Ooh. this energy surround you, this shield, um, as this form takes place. You, you, you can see Chauncey getting the same. There's no problems with the spell, right? It's all gone through. No, it's all fine. Good. Um, all right. Good luck. And they kind of tap you on the shoulder and you're led out onto the main <laughs> stage. <laughs> Our final preliminary <laughs> match for today here in Kelly's Rest. The Painted Prince! Um, <laughs> like a cheer from the crowd. I'll, uh, I'll cast Dancing Lights, mm -hmm. but what I'm going to do is have the orbs appear at my feet, so when I step, I'm leaving footprints oh, of nice. colour. <laughs> yeah, great. Right. Give me a performance check. Okay. Six plus <laughs> <laughs> performance. Nine. Okay, so you, that's what you try to do, but the nerves get to you and the <laughs> footsteps like are out of time. It's like you do it and then it's like three seconds later it's behind you and then the next one's too early and it just looks a little bit clumsy and awkward as you make it. And the crowd laughs, but not in a good way. Um, Chauncey looks over, he's like, you're a great idea, mate. And he begins uh, crafting like water out of the atmosphere, like moisture into the shape of like a dragon, like a watery dragon. Oh, well, it's far more It impressive. does not look as, as <laughs> very much like Lucius. He's like, Ooh, and the dragon kind of bloosh and like completely drenches him. His hair gets plastered <laughs> to his face and everybody laughs and he's like, Ooh, and he like, Ooh, he tries to dry. Don't his. be so hard on the poor man. He tried his best. He did. <laughs> they look up and like, they're, they're crowded like, ah, like, and you kind of, those of you who are watching, you get the sense that some people are like, oh, this must be the comedy duel that they brought out. <laughs> <laughs> this is the comic relief duel. Um, and you're taken to your positions. The stage is set. Lucius, from inside, you can't really see the crowd that well. You can hear them, but you can't see them because everything is hidden behind like a purple and blue haze of this cube. The lights, it just seems to you like you're in daylight. It doesn't look like you've got bright lights in your face or anything like that. It's almost as if it's just normal daylight. I thought there'd be a crowd. Did you think there would be a crowd, Chauncey? I think that there is, but we can't see them. Oh, right. It's exciting. <laughs> right, exciting. well, best of luck to you. <laughs> yeah, I hope you'll uh, do your best. Same to you, mate. Same to you. All right, here we go. And he takes his position. <laughs> uh, duelists, take positions. Spell clash. Uh, and that's roll initiative, please. All right. <laughs> Two plus. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Why can't I have your rolls? Do you want four. my dice? Four total. <laughs> now I've got these sweet new uh, gems. I just dice. rolled a natural 20. Oh my God, stop wasting them. Stop wasting them. <laughs> you need that dice, it's so weighted. I put it in the microwave for like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's like a blob with 20 on top. Okay. Um, okay. So. The match begins, uh, Chauncey kind of like drops down low, he like looks around and sort of <laughs> from the moisture, the puddles that he's left on the ground, <laughs> he kind of pulls up this blob of water, which then instantly freezes into a long uh, spike of ice. Oh, is that ice knife? <laughs> <It's> Whoa! It <laughs> flies towards you. Uh, what's your AC? Uh, it is 12, I believe. Okay. Might not be it's now. a 14 to hit. Yes, yeah, 12, yeah. 14, wow. so 14 hits. Um, so remind me, it's D10 piercing damage, isn't it? and then a reflex save. Oh, I should have stealth cast. So you take seven pitch. piercing damage to the shield. Okay. And then reflex save, uh, oh, dexterity save. Oh, that's to this, right? Yeah, so seven. Can I have the pencil, please? There you go. So seven points and then dexterity saving throw as it explodes into icy shards. It's an eight plus, we're gonna fail. Yeah, we already failed. Go ahead with failure. Okay. 10. Yep, failure. So uh, that's me, I've got a little damage. 
Uh, that's five more cold damage, which kind of whoosh, erupts around the icy shield, and you can see the cold begins like pressuring in um, on it. And you guys watching from the stands, you can see Lucius take this really bad ice spike, whoosh, kind of collapses. Uh, Quill, you're probably led out to your friends who are set. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey guys. Of course they. Awesome. Uh, Lucius, your turn. He, um, Chauncey keeps about 60 feet between you and him for now. Can I, um, as a reaction, mm -hmm. cast Absorb Elements? Absolutely you can, and yes. I'm going to do that. So that would half the cold damage, so you take two instead. Uh, that was the five before, yeah, right? Yeah, so reduce it down to two, so gain down three. Ten. Yep. Okay, and yeah, I've got that now. It'd be nine. Yeah. yeah. Total damage, <clears throat> right? yeah. yeah. Seven plus two is nine. So you take a nine <laughs> out of 50 damage on that. Okay. So you can't absorb, absorb like... elements, which absorbs some of the cold energy, and now you can feel like this cold energy coating your hands or any weapons that you have. I'm just gonna run at him. Okay. okay. Uh, Screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm so from... sorry! He like, looks like, woo! <laughs> and I'm gonna get my little dagger out. Okay. And then it's gonna form ice uh -huh. and Am I close enough to him? Uh, 60 feet, you can move 30 feet up, he's still 30 feet away. I'll dash then, as this round. Okay, action. so you spend your action to dash? <laughs> yeah, and try just to just keep going around him. Okay, yeah. make an intimidate check for me. <laughs> 18. <laughs> 18, okay. It's pretty good, but Chauncey's like... 21. Oh, oh. He like looks... <laughs> well, 21 is a difference. Chauncey panics for a second. He like doesn't know what you're doing, <laughs> and he just turns and runs. <laughs> he, he runs like... He, he dashes and runs 60 feet, so you're kind of Benny Healing chasing him. <laughs> I've got to use this on you! He's like, no, I don't want you to! I'm so sorry! It's a secret spell! He's like... <laughs> hey, look, like, why else would you run at me? That's insane! <laughs> what it's is happening? Like, <laughs> why isn't he casting spells? The, the crowd is just laughing. Well, you can try and call out to him if you want. Lucius, pretend he's a cow! Oh my god! <laughs> um, yeah, Chauncey just runs for his turn, so what do you do? Uh, he just keeps 60 feet better. away from you. Way right. better. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, I don't know what this is. I don't know why he's not casting spells. Why is he chasing a man? With a knife. <laughs> he's still like, he's like a murderer, like, ah! I didn't know he had a knife. This is very uncharacteristic. I'm not used not to seeing him like this. I'll um, put the knife eyes. away <laughs> and cast Chromatic Orb of Fire. Okay. Of fire. fire. Ooh. Okay. Add him. So, rain spell attack. Yep. <laughs> 12 plus 5, 17. 17. Chauncey's going to use his reaction to cast shield. Um, so he kind of throws his hands up. He's like, ah! as this shield comes into place and the spell impacts on it. I'm not so intimidating, I promise. He's like, well, I don't know, you're up to something. Why else would you run at me? Uh, he just throws up the shield as a reaction. Um, yep, so it misses. Uh, he has shield active. So it is good now, right? I'm just marking off some of his spells. He's down to one of those. Um, so yeah, so you've chased, so you're about 60 feet away from him. Um, he will turn around and he will, as a bonus action, he will spend some sorcery points to gain a first level spell slot back. Ooh. Um, and then he will ice knife you again. Uh, for an 18 to hit. <coughs> yep. I'm sorry. That's all right, can't be helped. So eight uh, piercing damage to the shield. I'll do absorb elements again. So well, that won't affect the piercing damage. Piercing is not yeah. elemental. So that you take eight and then dexterity saving throw. Uh, I'm just waiting for Chauncey to flip. <coughs> Nine plus... It's going well. Like three, I think. In all aspects. Uh, plus two. Yeah, so failure. So seven, and if you cast Absorb Elements as your I reaction, will do that. That'll so be that will half it to three. Twenty. Twenty or fifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. He's not, and you can see Chauncey's shield is completely fine. Um, what, are the, what are you guys in the audience doing? You're watching and you can definitely see, like, unlike Quill's battle, this is going pretty badly for him <laughs> so far. He's not hit with a spell, um, he's been hit a couple of times. I'm like peeping through. You're just like peeping fingers. through your hands, just, just like, like that. He was uh, just like... Thank you. Very I'm, confused. I'm She's already, just looking at a light. I already gave him Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> uh, um, does so anyone have any favour with the audience? So I think, not at the moment, but I think Valor will like stand up and she starts like, Come on, Lucius, do something, you can do it, you can win! Like she's like calling out like, I've seen you fight before, you can do it! Uh, not very high. Um, <laughs> 
But you do kind of, you can hear Valor's like voice kind of coming through. Um, and you do feel this kind of swell. Maybe it's something about the arena or the shield, but it kind of plays with your magic a bit. Like as your emotions build like this confidence, um, you can basically, so there's this thing where uh, you can immediately cast a first level spell. Thanks to Valor's encouragement. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. In which case, I'll but this you're not sure if you can do this a lot, and depending on it, it might have repercussions as well. Like it's like a hidden reserve. spell, kind of yes. So it doesn't burn a spell slot. Well, you gain the use of it. Sorry, not immediately. So you gain a first level spell slot. Oh, so I'll get that back then. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Cool. All right. This is a uh, you can only benefit from this once per spell clash. If I had that, I'm all burned out. Bang. All right. Uh, so now I'm going to cast. Yes, yes, I can do well. Thank you, Valor. Uh, chromatic orb, again. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna twin it. Ooh. Ooh. You normally have to target another creature, but as this is spell clash, absolutely. You can. This is spell clash. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the rules of magic somewhat get distorted in spell clash because of the arena's field. So I'll twin chromatic orb. Okay. Two attack rolls. Acid. Okay. Uh, which allows me to do my dichromancy as well. well. Yep. So here we go. So first one. 14 plus 5, that's 19. 19, even with shield he can't beat that, so that one goes through. Roll the second one. 14 plus so 5, 19. 19. Same thing, so both boom, boom, slam into the shield. And you can Sweet. see Chauncey's about to prepare, but then he just gets slammed by these two effects. So it's 3d8 on both. Yeah. So that's 7 plus 9 for the first one. Yep. And that's 7. Oh, plus six. Thirteen. Thirteen. Another thirteen. Twenty-two in one hit. Nice. So, Damn. Boom, boom, mark off the sorcery points for twin spell. Uh, uh, so you bam, bam, these two orbs kind of spin out from the sides. Your dichromancy would also go off. Was that first level spell? Yes. So that'd be an extra four points of damage. Yes, right. So you watch as like half of Chauncey's shield psh, psh, cracks begin forming all on the sides of it, and suddenly the crowd is again interested in the fight as Lucius starts fighting back as these acid begins, psh, psh, these goops of acid just bounce off the shield and begin melting it at it away. Um, if he really... twinned it, would he get double dichromancy? No. Okay. No. It still counts awesome. as only casting yeah. one spell. You just create two targets for. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, I really try and ham up the whole like eye glowing thing. Okay. Yeah. You kind of make a big sort of like gesture with it. Bigger <laughs> gestures. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Chauncey kind of like he's like, well, that was really good. I guess I'm going to have to use my trump card then. Ooh. And he runs within about thirty feet with your view, and he kind of clenches down, and you watch as these white dragon scales just begin what kind of crawling up of, like his, his neck and his hands. His fangs, like his teeth, kind of elongate. His, he kind of gets like draconic claws. Right, he's like, right, here we go! <laughs> <laughs> and he breathes a cone oh of coal, God. a cone oh. of uh, ice. Holy shit. <laughs> what the heck, yeah. Chauncey? What? <laughs> Lucius gets to pull weird acid color magic. This Chauncey guy's got, got dragon blood. That better Game. be on his application. <laughs> Chauncey got Because otherwise, that's a disqualification right there. I don't, does, does an innate ability like dragon breathing count as a spell? I'm trying to find, I'm, I'm like, I'm finding a referee. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, who says it's innate? This could actually be a spell. Yeah. I'm finding a referee this anyway. This spell class. Was this on his application? <laughs> you can ask. <laughs> Chauncey! <laughs> Just shouting. Hey, Chauncey! <laughs> he's thaumaturgy, I'm yelling it. I wish I'd got my spell cards. Hey. Yo, Chauncey! Uh, <laughs> so he's casting this at this level. <laughs> So dexterity saving throw, please, Lucius. All right. 19. Uh, 18, sorry. 18, so you're going to take half damage from this. Oh, okay. That's Sweet. fine. Uh, so that's going to be 10, so half it down to 5. Nice. Um, right. In fact, actually, no. Don't worry about that. I'm going to spend his last remaining... No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, take it. 5. Wait, does he have a legendary action? No. He's got sorcery points. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were going <laughs> to... Um, but he, you can see him like holding it in, and it looks he's like he legend. takes a breath like he's going to do it again on his next turn. What do you do? That was so powerful. I'm very proud of your abilities. Thanks, thanks, me. I could learn a thing or two from you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast Melf's Acid Arrow on okay. him. Sure. Range spell attack, I believe. Yeah. Ooh. I think it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, 19 plus 5, 24. Oh, yeah, you can't, you can't do anything about that. 44. Nice. <laughs> 1. <laughs> 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 Two, 
three. Oh my what? fucking god. Five. Wow. And then it's 2d4 next turn. So, five, and then Dichromancy, please, of uh, five. Five. <laughs> so oh, you watch this, this acid, this arrow of acid splashes against the shield, but he kind of like breathes ice, which kind of helps protect it, absorbs some of the acid impact as it hits the thing, and but it begins eating away at the magical shield around him. Uh, Chauncey's like, I was, expect I was expecting that to be a bit worse. And then he's like, it's all right. <laughs> and breeds another cone of acid. Dexterity saving throw against, please. Mm -hmm. Three plus three is six. I'm taking the full damage this time for 13 cold damage. I will absorb elements at level two. Okay. So is half the damage, so it goes to damage. six. That's yeah. pretty powerful. Mm. When you absorb it, like, what does that? It gives him resistance. But it, it, does it do anything? Oh, else? and then he any melee weapon he attacks he makes get an extra d6 of that element. While I was damage. running around with Oh, I see. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like a crazy so person. Six. six oh, yeah, once you half it, it goes down to six. <laughs> the vision of Lucius just chasing So at this point, the match seems very, very even. Yeah. Um, the, the two of them are exchanging blows. And now that things have heated up, like you can see Chauncey roaring like a little dragon and you know Lucius is throwing acid around. The crowd's really building into it and you can hear them raging. But nobody seems to have gained a certain side. Like it seems very even at Ayla's this point. gonna start a chant. Painted Prince, painted Prince. <laughs> yeah? yeah? Yeah. Give me a perform check. Oh God. Because Ayla, Ayla's doing it in an Ayla way. <laughs> Six. I feel like Ayla doing it would have a lot more weight though. Or if he's it was, maybe if it was intimidate, it would intimidate me any higher. Eight. Eight. It's still you're like painted prints. <laughs> Valor, but Val you do it. You Valor's do it. like yeah, painted prints, but it, yeah. it doesn't necessarily seem to be taking hold. People have already stopped listening. Delicious. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to. No, the hammer was cooler anyway. It's fine. <laughs> You see, he started chanting Quill. <laughs> that fight is over. Quill! I'm gonna Quill. try and cast Infestation on him. Okay. Yeah, I've got this. Okay. This is a thing. Infestation? <laughs> what? And I'm gonna try and use it because it's a ton of mites, fleas, and other Ooh. parasites. I had to. Oh. How much damage did you do with the acid? It wasn't very high. It's fine. He made his concentration check. It's 10 in total. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I want them to appear around him and kind of distract him from, like, difficult to. Okay. Fire at me. Okay. So uh, what do I normally do for the spell? Constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. uh, that is an 18 for me. Yeah, that probably succeeds. So you, <laughs> you summon all of these mites and fleas. Like, I, how does Lucius even do this? This is a very unlucious spell. Uh, can it be like little um, insects of different colors? Okay, so like little beetles and yeah. things like you create these little oh, magical cute beetles. ones. Okay, little cute ladybugs and stuff. They're not lice and parasites. Just but like the scales all over Chauncey, they don't seem to like, they're biting, but the scales just seem to absorb most of it. And he's just like, yeah, I'm not going to fall for that. I grew up in the country. <laughs> I've got a reaction, right, with Absorb Elements. Uh, once per turn, you can use a reaction, yes. Can I use that reaction to heal my shield? It's a bonus action on your turn. So you can do it now, because you've spent your action. I'm gonna do that. Okay, so you can feed a spell slot into it, and it's double the spell slots. Um, I'll feed my final level, level one oh, okay. into it. So what? how much does that give it back? Two. Two HP. I believe so, I think it's two times. Two times yeah. the levels. Fuck. Oh, that's a lot for a... Doesn't Mel Sassadari also do extra damage this turn? Yeah, yeah 2D4. does 2d4. I'll roll that now. One, <laughs> three, four. Four more points. Does Dichromancy kick off on that? No. It's when you cast the spell. Yeah. All right. So. It's and then I'm going to use um, my sorcerer. Points. That's a bonus action which you use to restore hit points to the shield. Bit. But you can do it next turn. All right. Uh, on Chauncey's one, he will. Um, he will attempt to use his last, uh, one of his last uh, fifth levels to cast Ice Knife again. So he comes and summons another spike of ice that he throws your way. That is only a seven to hit, however. So you knife. throw to the side as you kind of expect it coming, no knowing how the spell works. Um, as it impacts the point, you miss that, and then Dexterity saving throw for half uh, for the cold damage. 17 plus two to three. So, so you 20. take half, so it becomes four. It would have been eight, but it goes half to four. 33. But yeah, Chauncey's shield definitely has more cracks on it now at this point. Lucius, you can see him kind of like chipping away. Uh, Lucius, your turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I'm going to cast... Right, would you want a bonus action sorcery points and get spell slots back? Yes. You can do that first, and then you can cast as, a, as an as an act. I'll do two sorcery points to get a level two back. Right? Is that how that works? Or is it uh, I think it's three to get a level two back. That's all my sorcery points then. Yep. <laughs> Got a level two back. Yep. Which is pretty cool. I'm going to cast chromatic orb again. Okay. At, at second level. Second level. Okay. So that's forty-eight. Well, that range spell attack. <laughs> That's six. Have plus you used five. your Bardic Inspiration yet? No, I can use it now. Can I use it now? Yeah, please. <laughs> please. Five. Uh, that's 11 plus five. 16. 16. Oh, he's going to shield That'd it, isn't he? Quite a I think he would, yeah, he would absolutely use his last level one to shield because he's still got his Dragon's Breath up. So he throws up the shield. Shit. Boom, the chromatic orb hits it. He's like, oh, I think that was your last spell, mate. I'm sorry. Does my. Uh... Necromancy still goes off? Yeah. So that's. Uh, that was second level? Second level, so five. five. So you watch as like, he's like, I think that was your last, and then you pull out this last bit of, uh, of acid. I'll fight with every piece of my being. And it hits the last bit of the shield, and you can see this big, dense crack now. Chauncey's shield looks on the verge of breaking, but he's like, you're tapped out. You've got no magic left. Uh, and then he's like, this is it. One final breath. Dexterity saving throw. 12 plus three, that's 15. 15 is a save, so you take half, it goes down to five. It was 11. Okay. Uh, still in. 38. As your shield is now beginning to crack, nowhere near as bad as his, but still getting to the edge of its life. And he begins like, just, he's like, this spell will last for at least a little while longer. I'm going to overpower you, Mr. Lucius. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Fight with everything you've got. Uh, That's my go, yeah? Yeah. But I had a second level all along. Okay. Because I use my sorcery points. Okay. Until, point. Unless I didn't cast it, let me know. I mean, I've got cantrips, it's fine. No, uh, if you've got, if you say you've got the spell slots left, you've got the I can't remember if I, I chose to cast and it's full or not. I can't remember. I think you couldn't because it was a bonus action and you used it to heal your shield instead. In which case, I'm going to firebolt as a cantrip. Yep, range spell attack. Sorry. <laughs> no. <it's, laughs> I, I have to trust you guys on like spell slots and stuff because I can't see it. 17 plus 5. Hits. He can't Ooh. shield. So it's a d10. I don't have that open. D10. <laughs> you got a d10 for. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. You want that boys? Yeah. That looks cool. Use that one. Three! Sorry! Not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> This, the shield is barely holding itself oh. together as Chauncey's this fiery light bolt launches out. This tiny little chip of it still remaining. Um, Chauncey will rock up. He's like staggering over. He's just like, fight to the last bitter end. And he just like gives you a solid nod, like look, nod. <laughs> Dex saving throw. Oh, <laughs> shit. I mean, you could really do it with the name. Oh, shit. Uh, five. Five. It's gonna be full damage, it's nine. I'm still in. I'm still in. <laughs> <Got> three <laughs> health left. Seven. So at this point, their shields are just on the verge of breaking. The crowd is on the edge of their seats, like, yeah, come on! Like, you know, these these kind of close fights are, are very rare. Three points. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't know how many he's got left either. <laughs> three points. Then you're like one spell got, like, away. One left. You don't know. <laughs> um, how close am I? Uh, Thirty feet. He's been keeping like 30, like 15 feet, sorry, about 15 feet away from you the whole time. I'm going to use as my final attack. What you think might be your final attack. Oof. No, he looks like a dragon right now, right? He does look like a bit of a dragon. I'll use Acid Splash. Okay. What do I roll? So or it's... just a range spell attack. <laughs> deck saving throw, please. Nine. Oh! I succeed. Uh -huh. D6 and Dichromancy. No. Six! Not on a cantrip. You what? can get Dichromancy on six. cantrip. Six, though. But still six damage. You kind of stagger back as he's bringing in this last breath. Had, the colour like? always is bright. I need to work with that. <laughs> is it I a, don't... What do you do? <laughs> I don't think he's won. I think he's lost this. What's he? That sentence made no sense. What's he doing? I don't. I don't what, know. what does Lucius' final spell look like? What it's is it? quite it's pathetic. Go. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a blob of acid that comes out of a gem, and it kind of just arcs. It hits in the middle of a group of these cracks where the shield is its weakest point. 
watch, you watch as these blue fr shards just erupt onto the ground as the dust <gasps> settles. Chauncey like looks down, he's like, well, bugger me. <laughs> <laughs> the draconic features just re recede away as the spell fades. He like looks up, bloody good match. I go to shake my hand and, and faint. <laughs> okay, he like, can't, he's like, oh, he's like, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. <laughs> Uh, some medics probably come out uh, and check you over. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> Painted Prince! Woo! Prince! There's a big cheer that goes around. Thank you, There's a couple of comments about, it could have ended a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, but Sentry, yeah. it's fine, they're fine. Nobody died. Valor, they like, won! Valor leaps up and is yeah! just like, they won! They won! They won! won! <laughs> Quill, you were amazing! I know! I can't believe how quickly you beat that guy! I can't he believe it either! Garbage. He was awful! And Lucius, he fought as well! I, he, he, that was so close, I thought he was gonna lose! I mean, he beat a dragon thing! Chauncey, turns out, way more than he looked like he was. Really? Oh well, yeah, he was a dragon. <laughs> I mean, he's like a dragon man. He did also run away from Lucius yeah. around the arena, it wasn't the most majestic. It's true, he could have done the dragon thing straight yeah. away and then Lucius would have been running. Yeah. Uh, Lucius, eventually you're kind of like given some drink and and uh, <laughs> made sure you're okay. You're announced winner, you're taken out the back. Um, you can see, in fact Lucius, you probably glance, as you're making your way out the back and towards the stands where you know your friends are waiting, um, you see Richter talking with um, the dwarf Torgan and they look very, very unhappy. What, with each very other? Very unhappy. Sure. But you hear like whispered and like looks towards in your direction and then like whispers. I'll just keep my head down and move along. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You make your way back around to the front where your friends are waiting. I'll, I'll wave off Chauncey if I see him. Oh yeah, Cha no, Chauncey comes up and he's just like, just want to say thank you so much. I thought, you know, those spell, those Clash of the Champions guys, they're all a bit dodgy, you know? You not signed up with them? No, I signed up with someone back in Gold Throne and then I came here. Oh. Because it, it was the nearest preliminary match, right? So I thought, I'd come here. I signed up with a, an independent back there, but I've heard they're pretty bad news. So I'm glad that I got to fight you, sir. Likewise, it was a very honorable fight. Absolutely. Uh, you're, you're a color magic, that's amazing. I've never seen anything like that. I've met yeah. a few people like me with dragon blood. Have you? Excellent. Well, yes, I've not seen anyone else with uh, my abilities just I think, yet. I think you're going to go far, and maybe, maybe if I pass my next preliminary, we'll fight again. That would be, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. He's like, gives you a nod, gives you a thumbs up. He's like, right, I'm going to go eat some crisps. <laughs> 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 do, 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 do. And he goes over to the snack store, and he's buying big bags of fried potatoes. Uh, and yeah, you make your way back. Uh, Valor, as soon as she sees you, just runs up and she's like, Lucius, you did! Oh my god, you are amazing! You fought the guy and he was a dragon you know, and then you did great. the thing! It was so good! I totally had him the whole time. Man, I, I want to be in Spell Clash. Arthur, can I be in Spell Clash? I was like, nope, absolutely oh, not. Oh, come on, she <laughs> could be in Spell Clash. Yeah, I can be in Spell Clash, Arthur. Like, nope. She's more powerful than me and Birdie put together. Age mm -hmm. restrictions. And when she's of age? Yeah, maybe. You've got all this time to practice, Valor. She's like, yeah. I'm gonna practice magic all the time now. Good. Well, well be careful. So cool. I mean, <laughs> be careful what Why? magic you, uh, what? You, you you practice. Like not fire or. or Why? Well, because you might burn down a building or kill someone. I mean, I'm not gonna just run around throwing fireballs and stuff at everywhere, Quill. Good point. I mean, I. I mean, I would still like set up target dummies or something. That makes more sense. Yeah. I believe in you. Like, why would I just randomly start throwing magic <laughs> randomly? I mean, that's what I was doing, and it won me a fight, so... Well, I guess so. <laughs> oh my god, you guys were so cool! <laughs> I swear, at one point, I heard your voice, Val, and that... Yeah, I was cheering you on! Yes, that enhanced my spells. Maybe better. Really? Yes. That's cool. The power of friendship. Yeah! Friendship! And then she runs over and she hugs Ayla, and then she ah, rugs Sentry, yeah. and she runs yeah. and hugs Quill. <laughs> Thank you, She Bella. is like super hyped up teenager who's just like, this is the best thing ever and I want to do it all the time. <laughs> 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 Well, Vala, now that we've won the preliminaries, we're going to be in <gasps> even bigger tournaments against even stronger sorcerers and wizards and spellcasters. Glassy-eyed. Um, Daphne makes her way over to you. She's just like... <laughs> Very well done. Thank you. Uh, I have something to give you. She hands over a very crisp... It's uh, made from metal and inserted into a leather wallet. And it's like a printed-on metal sheet. And it has... Um, 
your names, uh, your titles, like your, your stage names, um, and it has an quill. etched... Quill. Yeah, <laughs> quill. Quill, it has acrylic like like quill. 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 Um, and it also has a small etched kind of picture of your what you look like as well. Oh. Um, and attached to it, uh, you can see that on the back there is this uh, kind of attached, like via a clip, is a uh, six-pointed star, um, but it's made from like a small crystal. And it's actually attached, and it can be attached and detached. Okay. Your spell clash licenses, duelists. And she hands them to each of you, Ooh. including your mote of starlight. Uh, now, I don't know if you'll remember, but I explained the rules for the tournament in Gold Throne. It takes place in approximately between eight and ten days. Um, you'll be allowed entrance depending on the number of motes that you submit. Those who have the most motes will be given one of the 14 or 16 slots in the tournament itself. Uh, the grand prize is quite a substantial amount of gold, so I wish you all the best. And based on previous entries, how many modes did they have to enter? Uh, well, I mean, previous entries as in previous last year's tournament? Yeah, tournaments, yeah. Last year's tournament, I believe that the lowest, uh, well, the upper, the upper tiers accumulate between 20, 30, 40 moats. In eight days? The lowest, well, no, they, they accumulate them over a longer period. You are jumping into the tournament quite late, gentlemen. Mm. Um, you've signed up uh, quite late on. Um, but the lowest that I've seen is five or six, but that will put you in the lowest bracket. Um, is so there we, a potential to raise up the bracket if we start low and then we, we're in the same course. tournament? You're in the same tournament, of course. You'll be placed against lower brackets alongside yourselves, but you will very quickly come against those who are far more experienced. Um, I wouldn't expect you to pass the mm, second round or so. Hmm. But you may surprise me yet, gentlemen. Thank you. And where should we go to find more moats? Any spell clash arena that you encompass on the way, or if you meet duelists on the road, uh, head to your nearest arena. Um, at any time, you can ask the referees to host a moats, uh, a moats duel. Um, you will need to wager your moats, um, but the arena will be made available to you at any time of day, at any period. Um, and as long as, both, as long as both opponents agree, the match will take place immediately. Okay. Now, it's always, we always have referees on hand to provide shields. So. Okay. Thank oh, you. That's very good. You're welcome. Very I believe there is another individual who would like to speak to you after your win as well. He was watching the match. Uh, he was oh, watching. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, she gestures over and leaning up against the food stand, holding like his head <laughs> with a drink in another hand. <laughs> you see this golden skinned, yeah. white haired, very dirty looking man who's just like holding his head and he's like, uh, he's like looking around, but he hasn't spotted you yet. Uh, should we? She told should probably him. go speak to him. He did sponsor us after all. Hold on. Let me just double check something else first. Okay. Night Frost? Yes, Master Lucius. Have you seen? It is only just getting dark now. I have not witnessed anything. Nothing from Breeze yet. Okay. Uh, well, in that case, let's go celebrate with um, Gideon. Right. Okay. okay. You make your way over. Uh, and as, he kind of, as you kind of get closer, he hears your approach as the group of you will make your way over. Um, and he like looks up, he's like, Well, I gotta say, you guys impressed me. I wasn't expecting you to do half as well. And I thought for a second, you were gonna bite it. I thought you were gonna faint, or you were gonna collapse or something. But you really pulled it together, kid. I'm really impressed. And you, that Richter, he signed up with Clash of the Champions. He's had some training. The kind of spells he was using, the, uh, the Earth and Grasp, that's a pretty good move in Spell Clash. Keeps your opponent in place and allows you to constantly put some pressure on their shields. That's a, that's a smart ploy. Yeah. You beat him into the ground with that magic of yours. I've never seen anything like it before, but hey. I'm sorry for the way I was before. I was pretty dismissive. Me and this sport, it's got a bad history. But I think you guys have got some real potential. If you wanted to, you know, keep going, that is. I understand if you've kind of got it out your system, but... There's definitely ways I can help you. I mean, we've got the licenses now. We need to gather some moats. Yeah. I guess if it happens, it happens. Maybe Breeze is a spell clash duelist. Maybe. I don't know. It sounds like a spell clash name, but I can't say either though of them. Okay. Well, if we come across people on the way in eight to ten days to a gold throne, then. Well, listen. Why don't you um, where are you staying? Uh, uh we're uh, the the. Rich place, can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's like, well, listen, 
I'll make my own way to Goldthorn. I don't want to be traveling with you, and I know you probably got your own stuff to do, but I'm going to make my way up to the city. But before you leave, come and see me. I'll run you through some basic drills, some practices you can run. Might give you an advantage in the next time that you, you do a duel. That'd be very useful. I really appreciate that, Gideon. He like looks for a minute as if he's about to say something else. He's like, yeah, well, you know, I know the sport and you seem like good kids and you came to me instead of going to those assholes at Clash of the Champions. So yeah, at least I can do is give you a few point pointers. And then, hey, maybe you get the gold throne you want to hire me on as a coach or a trainer or something like that, maybe I can, I can help. Absolutely. Looks like you got somebody that can help you with the physical side of things because uh, you can't just sit back on your laurels. You got to be in a good physical shape to do this kind of thing, all right? Yeah. Well, you we'll tell me I should whip them into shape. Maybe. We'll go over it. But, well, uh, definitely giving them some helps with, you know, basics, uh, you know, keeping their general fitness up to standard. Hmm. Can't just sit back and, you know, drink your life away like I did. Don't become a schmuck like me. Well, thank you very much, Gideon. So right. Oh, just keep an eye on your back as well. Can't imagine Torgan's pretty happy with you beating that uh, Richter kid. Uh, did you see him? Uh, yes, he was really upset. Yeah. Oh. Watch your backs. Don't go down any dark alleyways at night on your own is all I'm saying. Okay. Well, we've got uh, we've got some protection here. We've got so. protection. Yeah, I can see that. I'll like, slap Sentry's shoulder and say, well, Guardian, Let's go gather those moats. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Oh, hey, with those moats. Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, Why are you laughing? Nothing, nothing. What's the problem? I'm just thinking Spell Clash might be my destiny. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, one thing with those moats. <laughs> yeah. Be careful. That's of light. You meet some of these more unscrupulous duelists, they're going to pressure you to put more of your, as many of your moats on wager as they can. If they think they can beat you, they'll try and get, if you've got two or three, they'll make you wager all of them. But a few of them ain't, in, ain't above uh, underhand tactics. The match themselves, they can adjust, but I've heard of them doing things like, you know, kidnapping friends or, uh, you know, holding ransoms, sending people to beat you up before the fight. Make sure that you're not in fighting form. Just be careful, right? <laughs> what have we got ourselves in for? You've pulled yourselves into Spell Clash, my friend. Glorious. Amazing opportunities for wealth, fame, and money and power. Comes with a lot of, uh, well, darker elements to it, shall we say. I told you it was dangerous! I didn't know this was... Sentry has a point. Yeah, this is, um... It's fine. It's up to you. At the end of the day, you don't <sighs> have to do it, but I did try and warn you. Sentry, Sentry. We got it, it's fine. It was bad enough in the ring, and now we've got a lot more danger <laughs> outside of it! I mean, look, we, were, we wanted to make a name for ourselves. We knew this was going to result <sighs> in negative... It's fine. It's fine. I think fine. we need to go and get a warm plate or a hot chocolate or both because Sentry might implode. Mm -hmm. As you're saying that, Master Lucius, mm. I see someone. Figure has just emerged. A war a guardian. Their armor is uh, blackened. Uh, it is painted dark colors. They are traveling. They hold some sort of staff with them. Uh, they are waiting, searching around the garden, I believe. It is dark. The guards are patrolling on the outskirts. And with that, we're going to win today's episode. Hey, we <laughs> freeze next time. Ding dong. So, oh, boy. Yeah, let's try and rattle through these. I'm sorry, Sam, I'm keeping you a bit late, uh, but I just wanted to get us to a good starting point for next week. Yeah, that's um, great. Tom, take it away. Oh, uh, Nightjar <laughs> has donated. Still not quite caught up, so a member of the VOD squad again today. Uh, hope you have another wonderful stream, and remember, no deaths and loss of body parts. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. we succeeded. Oh, yeah. yeah, we're good. Um, thank you very much. Uh, Lone Wolfie. Hey, can't stick around. Swamp with exams. There's a lot I would like to tell you guys, but for now, uh, let's just say Rhiannon is the best thing to ever happen on HR. Aww. Uh, and that's saying something. You are wonderful, so happy, belated, welcome to Defan. Oh, that's so Aww. sweet. Um, She's great. Uh, the Aralak has resubbed and said, love High Rollers, thank you very much. Olorenve has donated with no message, thank you very much. Um, Chris Sprocket uh, has donated with, hey High Rollers, quick question. I have a player in my first ed uh, edition campaign who plays a Lightborn. He asks exactly how much uh, of their hair glows and whether or not they bald when they get old or regrow any of it when they are brought back to life. Up to you. It's up to you to decide all of those things. There's no hard and fast rules. No. Um, I think Cam had a Cam pretty big glow, didn't he? Everything glowed. Yeah. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Everything. Um, Everything. We've got another two from Lone Wolfie. 
Got to say, I recently received my high rollers shirt. It's super comfy and I need more, hashtag ad. <laughs> it is uh, comfy. Also, whilst typing this, I can hear the soundtrack in the background. Any place we can buy that because it's fucking epic. Thank you guys for being an inspiration. We don't oh. Saying that it's tech. epic, it's epic sounds. Epidemic. Sounds. Epidemic, epidemic sounds. Epidemic sounds. Uh, you can find ours. all on Epidemic Sounds and uh, really we, we don't have the license to redistribute it. Yes, just um, the intro. Yeah. But it is really good. Yeah, the intro it was created by Christopher Trott, though. Him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> over the years, uh, this is another one from Lone Wolfie. Over the years, High Rollers uh, was what inspired me to re explore my creative side, sit down and start writing and drawing, even though I have no practice. I'm having a goddamn blast. Also, turning away from the screen and going uh, to studying instead of high rollers is torture. Oh, well, podcasts and VODs are there for. VOD yeah. squad, my boy. Can we take subscriptions, Sam? Please. Yeah, I think um, really quite a lot. And a load of resubs. And Trot, do you want to carry on? Sorry, I had this up the whole time. But in a separate tab. <laughs> Freaking <Sake>. Doctor Dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Darth Day 41. How much do we need to chip in for a new Wirecast machine or a new Steve? Yeah, we're going to fix it. Like, Sam, yeah. Sam thinks he knows about uh, sort it out. It yeah. so. shouldn't yep, yep. be a problem next week. Uh, Desiree55 donated. I love how this series is full of best girls. Ayla's best girl, Nova's best girl, Sentry's best girl, Lucius is best girl, and Quill is a burb. I love them all. <laughs> See how Super Bowl is on tonight. Go, Pat! Oh, yeah, Super Bowl! Bowl. Oh, no, full spell clash. Again, I've not caught up with this season. Jesus. Uh, Pelapad donated. Hey guys, Sally, it's the VOD squad for me this week, but I need some advice. My friend has a similar backstory to Juto involving Slayer, but she's struggling to make it engaging and connect with the other players. Any tips you could offer? Uh, Much love. It's really tricky. Uh, I think Kim's in chat. You wanna... Kim's in chat. There you oh, go. There Kim you might go. be able to <laughs> jump in. I, I don't know if I can really offer anything there. Uh, read stuff. Like, for anything, whether it's backstory, no matter what the story is, read things. Like, watch stuff. Like, watch a TV program that focuses on slavery. Watch, read books about it. You know, you can take things away from that. Yeah, um, and it's also gonna be something that the other people can, uh, other people can yeah. relate talk to, to them or at least about, like yeah. talk to. If it's too heavy, yeah. and kind of bring the tone to a different way, different thing that they want to play. You've got to try and make it. Got to compromise something. Yeah. 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 Mm. Anyway, uh, Artificial, thank you so much for another Ace episode and for making me laugh. I've just joined my first proper D and D group. So excited! Yeah, yeah. Oh, good so luck. good to hear. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, so Butterfree donated. Fantastic arrows, beasts, and where to find them. Random questions. Uh, What's the name of the portal treasure goblin from the Elven Castle ruins? What are the shadow eels from the Rosewater Lake like? What are razor bears so, like? So, so the is the one who draws all the monsters on red. Nice. Yeah, yeah, they, they are, are they're really um, amazing. The, the little goblin thing was, it's, it's an actual monster in the monster manual, like a bogart or a boglin or something like that. I can't remember. Bogart is from Shadow Harry eels <laughs> are super long, gross, black shadowy eels. I don't know how to describe them. And then razor bears, I don't even know if I've ever decided what those are. Bears metallic with big bear. long claws oh, and okay. metallic shit. Nice. Yeah. I think uh, if you draw it, it will probably become the cat. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, go on, Reek. Yeah, reasonable. Uh, so Vans has donated. Thank you very much. Oh no, Van? Varys. Varys. Oh, I can't read. Yeah, that's right. Varys. There we go. And Azul Auros donated. Oh, stars mark. Eclectic is... A strange way to say that I'm insane. Well, damn it, I'm crying now. <coughs> Night Frost is such a wonderfully done character, and seeing PTSD portrayed so accurately is so rare and fantastic to see as someone who has it. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't think I was doing that good of a job, but thank you very much. Ah, uh, and uh, Dr. Latz has donated and says, Love the stream, get better soon, Kim. Get better soon, Kate, as well, from the set. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Manu has donated. Court Hundo. Court Hundo! Says, uh, Hi guys, I'll be joining the HR birthday party as my birthday's on the 15th. Yeah. Yeah. birthday. Also, Spell Clash! Woo. Thank you for the fun every week. I hope you'll get better soon, Katie. Share some hot noodles with Kim. Best flu remedy. Mm. Yeah. Thank good. you very much. And uh, Joe Tree has donated another Court Hundo. Court Hundo! Uh, says, Long time squad boyk, but here joining the stream for the first time. Thanks for Welcome. all the laughs and tell Kim to get well soon. We will. Get well soon, Kim! Uh, cool. Cool. And then uh, Dragstar is donated and said, hello, hello all. We have finally got their spell clash. This is to Araris. What the performance was delightful. Good oh, luck, yeah. Quill and Lucius. That performance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Cool. And Ace of Fawns has donated and said, hi, Mark. This has been time to take place on Super Bowl Sunday. Just wondering in any case. Hi, everybody, and get well soon. No, I Kim completely Park. forgot Super Bowl was on today. I'm going to go home yeah. and see if I can find a good stream yeah. for it. Herb Owl. <laughs> Superb Owl, I love my Superb Owl. I'll do the last one. Yep. Uh, Notex1 has donated and said, Hey HR, so Chauncey has something up his sleeve. Maybe he's actually Sala Blan on a <laughs> Planar holiday. I'm so bad with names. Also loving my new High Rollers dice I got <laughs> I yesterday. I was thinking about it. I know he 
was thinking about Glenodal. <laughs> Glenodal! <laughs> Names of my Achilles heel! <laughs> Not Many late times. donated. Uh, too late, I think of something for Lucius to say for his finishing move. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> hey. S. Mitchell, 86, donated a ha ha ha. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. No mess. Let's sand catch up. Uh, um, as Alora, uh, we had three daddies this week, and of the 76 people who bet, there were 17 who bet correctly. Wow. And Kim! Oh, Lucius, wow. we'll to chat again. Lucius uh, failing at uh, spell clash me at anything remotely stressful, <laughs> and then he's to draw Lucius with dyed hair now. Uh, yeah. Much as the game guy donated. Uh, Chauncey is the best. I love him. Can he join the party? Can I keep him? Also, congrats, Trot and Tom. That was one hell of a spell duel. Gonna be honest, didn't think you two would actually win. Hashtag roll on Sunday. I mean, if you roll Once on Sunday. Once again, Mark Humes underestimates uh, the potential for the party by saying like, oh yeah, I'll put them against like fourth level spell casters. Same level as them. That should be fairly even. No, they get fucking bullshit like three natural 20s. Um, well, that was, was really cool. close. Yeah, that was yeah really he close. thought was really close. This one, this he guy's just like... He just rolled another natural 20. What? Stop it! Save, Stop them, it. All for, save them all for next week. <laughs> save them all for next week. <laughs> hey, speaking nice. of, we'll be back next week for some more Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It's going to be a little birthday stream for me, me Trot and, uh, and Ree. Yeah. Yeah. And we're we've also going to have a little sponsor. sponsor. We've got a cool sponsor. Yeah, yeah um, sponsor. There's a one-off sponsor. Uh, we'll see you next week. I hope you enjoy it. There's loads more awesome content. Uh, on the Yogscast Twitch, also over on the High Rollers YouTube channel. You should go check that out and all of that good stuff. Yeah. We'll see you soon. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.